Hello and welcome to the Computer Game Show. My name is David Turner. I'm here with Matt Murray. Hello. Sean Bell. Hello. Returning to the show this week, it's James Farley's back. I mean, he was last on week? last week. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. say that, he, he fucking wasn't. I mean, <laughs> <It> was. <laughs> technically, he's got us on a technicality, Sean. He mm -hmm. was connected to the call, but he said a total yeah. of about eight words and Not they true. were whispered. <laughs> That's not true. That's yeah, but the, yeah, but the piano. It was, yeah. it was quite Jeremy funny doing, doing the edit. Being right? off for... Doing the edit and looking at the obviously everyone's waveforms, and you can see where James's contractual obligations end. <laughs> oh my god, it's mad, isn't it? Yeah, that yeah. last part of the show, he just didn't talk, yeah. didn't talk, and then That's when it got true. to what he'd been playing, he went, "Ah, oh, I've really been playing it for <laughs> now." Nah, it's it's true. I, I played nothing that week. I was doing as right. nothing was going on. What about the week before, though? Remember, you were off for a while. I was off for one so, week, David. Okay. One week. One. Well, yeah, but which is two we weeks gave you in two total, weeks to play yeah. games. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, Look, it's, it's like it's, it's, it's like it's last fair. week again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Piano. It's like posts and news. Let's get to Patreon producers this month. They are Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks chap, Simon Nelson. Moomin Biscuit, Trans Rights to Human Rights, Dave Ernsberger, Colin Brown, Gazman, Rocketman76, Smooth Monkey, Richard Sawyer. Ri Why are you doing that, James? Why, Why are you pissing what? around with the document when I'm trying to read it? Are you trying to piss me off? I don't know what you're talking this about. What's going on? You're just trying to get me back from giving you a little bit of a... What are you doing, James? <laughs> this is really annoying. Why are you doing, doing James? And no I'm doing one, nothing. I'm no doing one nothing. can see what you're doing. But so Matt's, Matt's doing pointless. it as well. Matt, and you're not I scrolled up in. to see what shit you were doing. That's exactly John what I'm, Tempelli. I'm scrolling up and John Tempelli, Jackie Sniper, Sam Higton, Tom S, Stan, Philip with an F, Cutty, Steve Lee, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Man, Tri-State, Oods, and we've got a new full Nels oh member. Everyone, I would like to introduce you to James Argentinus, which is... Probably the greatest name of all time, I, I mean. think, is up there. It's, James, it's, it's, can it's I either marry you or be adopted by you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or just steal your surname. Or yeah, just pay David Argentinus. And just change, yeah, change my name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, you don't need to go through the whole yeah, Well, I don't know. Years ago it was. Probably probably, probably gone up like everything else, eh? No, oh, okay. yeah, you can't even yeah. change your name these days. No. Because of, no. of woke. Pounds. Very expensive, very expensive. <laughs> um, James, that was annoying as hell. Please never do that. Your punishment is to read out the list next week of Patreon producers. So that's what you will be doing. Looking forward to um, it. Looking forward to it, David. Uh, <laughs> you can support the show. Help support the show by going to patreon.com forward slash TCGS. We really do appreciate it. And remember, if you don't, we'll fucking stop. We will stop this and we you'll will. have no more show. What do you think about that? Patreon.com oh forward slash TCGS. To change your name yes. now, it's £49.32. That's gone up, isn't it? It's yeah, profit still, on that. Still not, still Jesus. pretty much of a bargain, yeah, but though, The thing it? is, I it bet is if you look good. into it, if you look into it, Sean, mm -hmm. I bet it's because people were taking the piss. Do you Probably. know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. you're back again, are you? Yeah, yeah. what is it this week? Yeah, well, <laughs> that's what I'm Is there any limit to this? Can you just keep doing it? What, like gamer tags? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only once every forty eight days. Yeah. Um <laughs> one day I'm gonna tell the story about what happened to Chet Roivis. Oh yeah. Oh that was <laughs> checking good. out I mean... <laughs> game attacks, but I don't I don't I can't remember what his game attack is at it's the moment. It's doubly so funny I'm... because he had such wanna... a good game attack before. Yeah, he had the best game attack <laughs> of all time, excess panache, which yeah. is about as good as it possibly gets. And he accidentally yeah. changed it to something not as good. So I don't want to tell <laughs> yeah. you what that was because uh, because I don't. It, maybe it's still that feedback, Matt. Last week they all love it, did they? They did actually. Tiny Tim did has messaged. Notice, did anyone notice that James was on the show, or or is there anything to do with no James in this it. feedback? Oh. Yeah, there they... was. Yeah, there is. I can see okay, it. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. Fair enough. Yeah, it says where was James? <laughs> that was that's the message. <laughs> no, uh, <clears throat> Tiny I brought, Tim. I brought light music. To that show last week. No, not even no, you, not you didn't bring. No, your your neighbours, your, your people in the house did. Yeah, I know, but it's still added to the ambiance. I thought of the show and yeah. Sean's edit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I just left the piano in. <laughs> <laughs> well, we kept referencing it, and it was too funny. So I was like, ah, keep it. It's fine. <laughs> okay, and also it's easier for me. And also it's less work. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Tiny Tim, dear sirs, as a 14-year-old footballer, I have severe <laughs> halitosis. I blame it on the toothpaste my mum insists on buying, that fluoride-free shit Mr. Bell mentioned. <laughs> it's not actual scat, but I'll be none the wise if I hadn't seen the box myself. Now my breath stinks, especially during afternoon practice, and the boys on the team keep referring, referring to me as Tiny Tim Box of Mints. What with me having to rattle around with the bloody things in my pocket disguise the odour? <laughs> well, uh, no actual feedback in there. Tin of, so tin that. Does that mean he's on the fisherman's friend? I think he's on the fisherman's friend. Yeah, those. I did when I was younger. They're, They're extremely gross, strong. They? Yeah. Are, they, what, are, they rub, are they bad? No, they're just quite strong mints. But like on a level of what? Are they more strong than, say, a, a tree ball extra strong mint? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just taste bad. But that's yeah, just, that's <laughs> the difference. I just don't understand why you pay like a pound fifty for one. In like a little wrapper, uh, you only get one in those wrappers, don't you? What? What? No, you, you get, get a little tin. So it's a little packet. It or whatever. It, it, yeah. I, no, as Tiny really? t- as Tiny Tim mentioned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The box of oh, them, wow. yeah. Around There's with a little tin box tin in it. What? Well, you, well, so you, you think you get one well. big mint? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I genuinely <laughs> thought that. Have you seen the size of the box? Credit cards. No, one big mint. It comes in that plastic. It comes in that like like paper wrapping thing. Fisherman's friend. Okay, but you thought it was one. You thought you bought yeah, one I single there was mint. One mint in the middle of it. Yeah, <laughs> is I this genuinely is what did. Stopped you from buying it, Dave. Like you're just Part, like, partly. Yes. You're wasting your money with a worth the cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah at least tree bore for like you know load, load of these. A mint the size of a beer, Matt. You, can't, like, you it cannot says, be fisherman's a friend. Singular on the on the package. Exactly. <laughs> what, so I thought it was one mint in a in a in a. I like I could easily turn around and go, no guys, I'm joking. No, I genuinely up until tonight. Thought that if you, I saw one in a chemist the other day, and I was what, like, I still don't get why people you can still find just them. buy a single mint. Like I don't get, I don't understand. And what did the person the behind the counter say to that? They said, "Get out." Yeah. <laughs> can we do a fisherman's friend challenge stream? Well, where we on. all have one. We just eat fisherman's friend and have a chat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it is yes. a hot new trend on TikTok, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Can you do the Fisherman's uh, Friend Challenge? Our patrons are going, they really are running yeah, out. Scraping like, the mouth. Bring the world back world. the milk race, <laughs> you cunts. <laughs> Next bit of magic. <laughs> Aaron Savage. Dear James, you have besmirched my good name. I have a particular set of skills that will allow me to find you and challenge you to a duel. Yours forever. Aaron Savage. <laughs> I was, when, we, when I listened back to this, I feel like we didn't. I, think, I feel like we let James off with this. You just yeah. made you up a that. person. How d- we did, did ask him. We, asked we did him, say, but where is like, it come I don't know. from? And then we just left it. I really, I, honestly, I don't know. Like, I was <laughs> writing those, I was writing the whole of that in haste. And I don't know where that came from, honestly. Well, was it like a predictive text? Apple thing? Or? Yeah, it must have no, been. I don't think so. I, just, even... I don't remember. But it is weird. I mean, it Aaron is very Savage. Uh, Aaron Savage. Because I thought <laughs> maybe, I was like, oh, did he say Adam? Because Adam Savage is the guy, he does the, he was the Mythbusters guy, right? Um, yeah, on yeah. Tested.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought, I mean, oh, mate, but then listen back. So, no, he definitely says Aaron. It's so a good name. Totally... I mean, how much was that deep hole cost again? <laughs> He's doing it again. <laughs> it's He's doing it. <gasps> the next time we have a bet. We should do it. You have to change your name to Aaron Savage. <laughs> That's yeah. the one. No more bets after this. Matt's got to change it to Matt Morley. Because <laughs> <laughs> then what will Matt Morley do? Change yeah. it to Matt Murray. Let's, yeah. let's, let's go full crazy. Life swap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, next message from it's a returning message from Autistic Gamer who messaged us last week. Hello, David, Sean, Matt, and James. This is an update to listen to the podcast on the Xbox Spotify app. Sean, it was worse. You ruined my life. No, no, that's, that's a joke. Um, it was this, uh, this week was a success. The length of the episode was two hours, three minutes. I listened to the show over three days and it played at the exact point I paused it, which is great. Fingers crossed it will like this from now on. I really appreciate that Sean took a genuine piece of feedback seriously and for looking into it and finding a fix. Thanks for being kind and respectful. Really appreciate it. Thank you ever so much. Thanks for all the podcasts you do and for keeping me company while I'm gaming. Keep it up. All the best. Cheers. I'm really uh, pleased. Success. Um, because it would have been really annoying if it didn't work. Because I'd be I'd be out of ideas. Um, but yeah, no, I'm really glad. It also got me thinking, Matt. You know, whenever you edit and my audio is not quite the right length, it's always like a bit yeah. short. Oh, I wonder if this is the same thing. Oh, but that's exactly what it is. Then probably uh, that must be what it because is. Because I'm yeah. when I edit, I'm constantly like 
move your file forward at, at, yeah, yeah. yeah about three or four times a show Sean. Yeah, give it a second yeah. Sean. Wow. amateur i am <laughs> well, <let's... laughs> what was yeah. funny as well i did notice a few people going yeah what what is it with that and i just thought mm. well hold on why you, why haven't you said anything <laughs> if it's been weird stuff going on in your player <laughs> so you'd be happy to know autistic gamer that you were not the only one suffering yep. and um and uh, do you know what like i'm actually genuinely impressed because the moment you read that it took you about 10 minutes to go i think it's this then you solved it <laughs> and i was like fair play <laughs> i would be i would be so defensive to start with and it would have taken weeks for me to get to the point <laughs> that you, well i'm not going to change it because what you know why i'm not going to change I? the way I do for yeah <laughs> yeah well done well done well done uh Brad from Iowa hey all on episode uh 409 you discussed possible reasons why Matt may have pronounced medieval the way he did and James asked is that the way Americans pronounce it I wanted to confirm that yes Americans do say uh medieval with only three syllables perhaps matt picked up his pronunciation from hearing american podcasters talk about randy pictured leaving a usb in the medieval times restaurant all the best from brad yeah I, I don't know where i got it from um well we and, know because uh, you want to be american mm -hmm. yeah i love american yeah, things yeah famously yeah, you, love you say tube you say, I say tube. tube i, yeah. I say tube. Um, aluminum yeah, yeah. <laughs> aluminum <laughs> um sad, sad, yeah it could be that brad yeah could be yeah. that I think it is, mate. Uh, I think it is, mate. <laughs> I think it is. I think he is. He loves. He loves America. Something Americans. must have. Something, Americans I don't podcast. know why. It's not like I'm listening to American no, history podcasts. I guarantee. Something, something, we're kind of funny talking you... about it. Uh, I've listened to it for a long time, actually. You, you love. You love ruining it. <laughs> Matt, Matt. I guarantee. When you were younger, when you were in your early teens, you considered moving to America. Considered right? <laughs> like it's a possibility. Yes, no, I, like, I, 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 I considered it. The dream it. was to live in America. That was um, the dream. That's what no, you I, thought I, you belonged. I don't think that was. I know. <laughs> if it was, I don't remember that, so I don't believe that's the case. No. Right. Okay. I, I wanted to move to London where the rest of the family was. Really, not not in Bognor. Uh, that's okay. what I wanted to do. Uh, oh, right. right, Vicky Rowe. <laughs> <laughs> that rings a bell. Have you ever accidentally found out something you wish you hadn't? <laughs> uh, Vicky, uh, I'm, I don't think this is Vicky because Vicky spelled incorrectly. So you've, <laughs> unfortunately, not this week, uh, Vicky. Maybe, maybe the real Vicky will be emailing another time. Not sure. She on Facebook? Um, I haven't checked recently. Yeah, that that's like not true. Yeah. Recently, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true at all. Uh, also, no, because my Facebook account got nuked, and I'm like, can I've begrudgingly created another one anyway. So I got um, a new one. So just, just yeah. type it in. That, what do you mean but, got nuked? I told you, it got hacked when I was away on holiday, and then, What's yeah, and then like my the name of my account got changed to this other random woman with like the pictures of different all sorts. Vicky Rowe, and and then I got an email saying, <laughs> "Sorry, your account's been like basically it's gone and you can't get it back." So, yeah, annoying. That, that, you, and that sounds like you were experimenting and and needed to come up with an excuse. <laughs> no, it got. Okay, oh, I, I've told you a story. I definitely told you when yeah, I went to age of Croatia. Yeah, I can't remember the name of the singer. Because there's like a singer's name, and then like if you search that person's name, there's like real Facebook accounts with like fourteen or fifteen million followers. So I don't know what they're trying to do by hacking mine, changing the name, and then changing the picture, and then yeah, right, told. Okay, here's what happened, Sean. He <laughs> saw someone with fourteen million followers and said, "I'm going to copy them exactly." <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. Got, nearly got found out, and then come out with, "Oh, I was I was hacked. I was hacked." Hack. Excuse. It's, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm I'm still I know it's sad because it's only Facebook. I'm still genuinely really annoyed about because I had two factor authentication on. I had like. All the all the, all the, you know no, um, all stuff. A... No, but it's all the memories. I've had that account since like 2007. It's like it's just annoying. And like and also there's no way to like... get it back. <laughs> yeah, because you'll always be like, look, you can have the account, but can I just get the download? Of yeah, all the can stuff I just like, like... And like yeah. <laughs> yeah? I mean, I, I I didn't use Facebook. like barely use it these days. But it's like mm. just killing it with like. And also, I've had the same name since day one. Why do they think? Oh yeah, it's definitely probably just Matt changing the name in the picture. And now we're going to kill the account. Did I not think? Hang on. Maybe it's like untoward happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, I know it's stupid, but it's kind of and does my nothing more time and I can't get it back. Okay. Anyway, I've I? got a feeling that Matt might be a little bit touchy today. I've got, you know, we've not mentioned the No, I just have, I've, the I'm sure I mentioned that uh, right. story. Well, yeah. well, what we, what we need to do, I need Dave, to find a pic. Keep I need to find jokes a picture. and see what happens. Let's just keep... Yeah, uh, <laughs> let's keep prodding and see how mad he actually gets. The, the guy who uh, I might get mad, doesn't actually. get angry. I might get mad actually. I wish. I, do I still have the picture? Oh, I fucking don't. It was. What are it's, you doing? Trying to find a picture of the of the person's name and the picture on the account on my Facebook account. I don't think anyone cares, Matt. It's fine. <laughs> no, because it was funny. Anyway, okay, well, okay Ben Morgan. 
lads, well, thanks, last Robbie, week for the message. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, Ben from Oregon. Lads, last week's show was one of the best. A classic in the TCGS oeuvre. James with his weird weekend vibes piano and all was great, but when you add straddling into the mix, it just goes to the next level <laughs> shit. I was absolutely pissing myself. Luckily, it was at a stoplight, so I didn't crash my car. I can relate to David, as I've been a funk with games of late. I dip into some stuff on Game Pass, but I've otherwise had a, been on a power wash addiction. Enter Sean with an absolute bang of a wreck uh, with mini shoot adventures. I absolutely came to this weekend, and I can say it's well worth my time, and may have brought it back from the brink. Always the best pod in my player every week. Love you forever. Oh, cheers, man. Oh, well, I hope that game comes out for a good thing. I want to play that <laughs> game. Thing that you have. Yeah, it thing that do. I have. It will do, surely. You'd imagine. You'd imagine. Well, yeah. Okay. Okay, Tom, not sure if I'm supposed to do a funny kitchen appliance still. Yeah, you are, Tom, actually. <laughs> Um, hello lads, please don't get angry at James's choice of recording locations. These may be in some of the funniest parts of the show. Sorry, Matt. The show needs more of James hiding away from awkward situations while recording the pod. Thanks for all the laughs. Keep up the great work from Tom. Again, do you know how lucky you are, James? <laughs> the fact that your thing is that you don't do much and you and when you do, you fuck it up. Like that's, 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 that's outrageous. outrageous. You get to, that is your thing. That's, that's not true. Like I do loads for. of stuff. I'm always doing Go stuff. On. I do the news. I do. Yeah, but people like it when you fuck the news up. That's yeah. the point. Yeah, but that's not intentional. No, I didn't say it was. I'm just saying you found yourself in a position where you're on a podcast, a very successful podcast, mm -hmm. and and your position of it is making mistakes and not turning up. That's the good content that you bring <laughs> did, to the that's table. The thing that I did turn up. That's the thing. Mate, you filled the technicality of connecting <laughs> to the call and then said, hello. And it and wasn't then that bad. Minutes and minutes and minutes went past and you just weren't in game. It was that bad. It wasn't. I, have you still got the original files, Sean, somewhere? Uh, I will have, yeah. I'd like to know the longest period of time where he didn't make a single sound because I bet it was over 15 minutes. Well, no, you, sometimes, sometimes, you know, I've got to let you guys, you know, talk and, you know, give you <laughs> Yeah, you exactly. Yeah. It's just, it's mental that I've put you in this position. It's absolutely crazy that I've gifted you this. It's outrageous. And, <laughs> it's not, it is. is it? I do it's not. semi-regular streams like from time to time. Yeah, sometimes. How was, how was last week's, James? Yeah, yeah I didn't do that. Friday, I didn't I'd spent time with my wife, Sean. I'd seen her for 10 days. Oh, don't. <laughs> start. <laughs> he starts doing that. Okay, next bit of feedback. Uh, Cracko Demon has messaged, just a suggestion for Matt. <laughs> Fuck off. No. <laughs> Just a suggestion for Matt. Now that you've had some, now that you've got some newfound cojones, I think maybe we should swing them in the direction of Soma. The gameplay is essentially the same as Still Wakes the Deep, walking sim-ish, featuring defenseless encounters with fairly hor horrifying things for short periods. But it adds a thought-provoking sci-fi setting of discussion. Uh, that uh, that discussion of my hang on a sci-fi setting. So when I saw that this, discussion I meant, of, to, I meant to rephrase it because it's yeah, it's come out bad. It adds a thought-provoking sci-fi setting that discussion of may step the podcast up into a whole new level of philosophical sophistication could even lead to your understanding about how powerfully wrong some of your takes occasionally are. <laughs> what, <Jesus>. Me? <laughs> Down to the heart. <laughs> wow. Uh, on a completely unrelated note, stop bagging out to Doom Eternal. We are many, and any one of us have the power to take on heaven and hell and everything in between. Don't mess with us. Love you all, especially Daddy Sean. Keep representing the PC gamers. Give Eternal another shot. It was a very oh, lovely average game. message. Um, <laughs> I think um, it's clicked with me about Doom Eternal, the amount yeah. of feedback we've had over that. Mm. I've got a theory as to why some people are very angry about us, about our view on Doom, Doom Eternal. Go what on. do you play on, James? Uh, PS5. I think the people that really liked it played it on PC. Yeah, you're probably right. And we there was played chat it on about this in the console. Discord, wasn't there? People saying, oh, was yeah, there? possibly keyboard and mouse makes the difference. Well, well I think it it's not only right? key keyboard That's and still... mouse. Yeah. I think it's more to do with the fact that you switch weapons easier on mm. PC yeah. because you can hotkey it yeah. Yeah. and you can switch the modifiers easier. Yeah, because yeah. it's you just hotkey that stuff. Well, you can't do that on console, and it was mm -hmm. constantly going in and out of wheels and changing mm -hmm. things. And yeah. yeah, it was a real. Bo I reckon that's what the difference is. I reckon it was really easy to do that shit on PC, also, and not so easy to do. On. 
the ammo thing is real, like in the sense of it having a lot less. Because I looked up on the internet and somebody had worked out how much ammo there was in all of the Doom games, like, you know, like through, you know, for each guns and everything. And Doom Eternal's got the lowest ammo count of all of them, which... Oh, well. All right. Okay, annoying. facts. Okay, um, there we go. With regards to Soma, uh, Matt, it's got a full, like, uh, I can't remember the proper term is, but basically the monsters don't chase you and they don't hurt you. So you can just, like, it's still creepy oh, okay. and the monsters are still horrible, but they're not trying to get you and you can just enjoy the story, which apparently is amazing. Um, so oh, I, so I, that's I, a setting I where I turn the monsters game. off. Is that what you're saying? So they're still in the game, but they right. just don't pursue you or hurt you. I believe. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I might, I might give it a go. I might give it a go. I'm going to for a, a, a fun fair ghost train, is it? Where they just go, <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. go back, that, creep back, back even, and then I leave. <laughs> don't like that uh, either actually <laughs> is that um, feedback Matt? yeah go to tcgs.co forward slash dear tcgs leave your feedback I've just uh, found a person whose name my account got changed to someone called Candy Burris who was actually one of the lead vocalists in the highly successful 1990s R&B vocal group Escape and now she's <laughs> an actress and a businesswoman oh nice can someone explain that why that would what, what, what's, the, what's the reason a hacker would do that Matt, can these people just get in touch with you personally and ask you about this? Because I don't. Yeah, think it's let's keep it off of the show, please, because <laughs> I don't think anyone. I wish I could get some time. Oh fuck! Uh, right, <laughs> should we get on some news, James? Yeah. So Xbox Game Pass has had some changes this week. Uh, that have come okay. To it. It's going to so, be cheaper and more games on it. Yeah, I assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, that's exactly Wicked. what's happening. You know uh, simple, simple to understand. Yeah, yeah. A losing thing when when describing the tiers, you've got to go. Right now, <laughs> <laughs> listen. It is my attention. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. Like you look at it, and it is a little bit confusing. I'm uh, excited to hear James really explain is. this. Mm. Okay, so here's what's happening. Game Pass for console is going away. Like that's going to be gone, and instead, it's going to become Game Pass standard for new users. This is for people that sign up after I think it's like August. 14th or something like that so what i don't get about this is what's interesting so they, they've got a tier that's continuing for existing subscribers yeah and a tier for new subscribers yes but what does that does that mean when your laps your subscription lap is lapsed yeah do you still you get the new, old deal no you'll you'll be back you'll be put on so, game Pass. yeah so you're being grandfathered to, to keep you on to the old yeah. one to it's, keep you it, paying it's a little bit like no you no know, no, do you no, with... no if it lap if if it yeah, laps yeah, surely it... if you run out of your twelve months, then that's it. Then you become an, you have to sign up to the new one. No no no. If if you have it on renewal, it's yeah. I think you can still keep renewing. And oh, it's you okay. have to have it on renewal. Yes, that'd and be otherwise... really interesting to see. Sorry, I know we're going into this like we're jumping the gun a little bit here, so I apologise. Um. Uh. Okay. No, sorry. Explain what it is because if people don't know where it is, then this whole conversation is pointless. Sorry, James. Okay. So. This new this new tier it's called Game Pass Standard, which is pretty much what Game Pass for console was, with one big exception. And so far, there's no UK price for this either, although it's fourteen ninety nine um, in the US. But the big thing is is that they're removing like day one releases from this tier. So if if you want to have like the day one stuff, you now have to have Game Pass Ultimate because that's the only tier that has uh, that has day one games. And has these... there been any clarity on so what is it just like an arbitrary delay with certain games that is it... that is they have not said they've not said, they've, they've, cool. they've not okay. said how long it will be because obviously yeah. those games will probably eventually end up on game pass mm. but they're not uh yeah it's not confirmed how long that will be and microsoft haven't said how long it will be either mm. i mean probably i don't know six months a year six I'd, months could, yeah 12 yeah, months can't guess you know what it's going to be um so also like existing users you can also now only stack up to 13 months so you can't do like loads the of three years, years. It, used be, it used to be three years that's, yeah. that's what he's loved doing you can't do that anymore 13 months how strange yeah so then so game pass ultimate includes the day one releases and cloud streaming but the price for that is increasing um to 14.99 a month and the pc game pass is also increasing to 9.99 a month from 7.99 and then game pass core is also going up in price but this oh, is I'm weird. lost already <laughs> <laughs> but, this, but the Game I'm Pass Core thing is weird because it's only the yearly price that's going up, and it's going up from like fifty quid to fifty six quid, 
and the monthly is staying the same. But the main, the major thing with this is basically the the day one stuff that Microsoft love going on about all the time at every single, you know, like event they do, is only going to be on Ultimate now. And if yeah. you are on standard, then yeah, you're not going to get that anymore. It's um, yeah, you just get it's, the. It's just because genuinely, uh, like price is going up. I think at this point is. Like it's it would still be news, but it wouldn't. If everyone's just sort of used to that at the moment. Prices of everything's going up. Yeah. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't welcome it, but I also wouldn't be surprised by it. But this this further like muddying of the waters in terms of what you get on different tiers and stuff. I just I don't get it. I don't I mean, see how it helps. They're really pushing clearly, like to try and get people on Game Pass Ultimate. Like that's the that's the aim here. Yeah. And yeah. so. It's just saying basically, yeah. If you if you just want the standard Game Pass now that you had before, then yeah, you're not getting that anymore, and so you have to you have to go for for Ultimate instead. Mm. I mean, I I think this is really bizarre and really weird because, I mean, I this must be because of Call of Duty, right? And because they must have figured out that they can make a lot more money um, from you know from selling it to people that are on Game Pass Standard as well as like a standalone release rather than uh, oh definitely yeah rather than bundling it well know, we could that might somehow yeah and but it's just weird because it's like I mean their whole thing has been for years now like day one Game Pass like that's the yeah. if you watch any of those like those uh, conferences they do they all have that like and they're all coming day one to Game Pass you know that whole thing and it's interesting like... they didn't say it this year did they. Mm, good point so uh yeah I mean, obviously wait because i knew this was coming yeah and it's just a bit odd i mean the price the price rises i mean that that that's crap but it happens anyway i mean that mm. always happens with these things but removing like what was good you know for a lot of people out of this because it's not just the like microsoft first party games either that are like these day one releases either it could be like indie games it could be like all sorts mm -hmm. of stuff that won't you're only going to get that now if you're on ultimate and uh yeah it's a bit bit strange i um i don't i don't i i mean we know that microsoft have been doing some strange things they've clearly looked at where they were heading and they're making some wild changes uh this this to me says one or two things they're either pulling away from game pass and trying to remodel to focus on um to focus on the the sony playstation model you know, having a subscription service, but it's not as mm -hmm. enticing as um, as uh, it has been in the past or what they wanted to do. But also, I think they want to sell their games for $70, like, yeah. like PlayStation are. And they've got some games that are tracking well at the moment and people seem excited for. There'll be a new Forza. There'll be a new... Um, you know, Forza's a really good example, right? Forza Horizon is, like, it's been praised... Every iteration that's come out, it's been getting nines and tens. Everyone loves Forza Horizon. It's a fantastic game, and and I can see why. It is a brilliant game. They bought that day one to Game Pass, and they must be at the back of their mind thinking, we really did fucking leave a lot of money on the table there because people will pay $70 for that game. They mm -hmm. just will because they know it's big. They know that they'll play it to death. It looks good. It's It's something that you can't get on a PlayStation. Um, it's a big game for them, and I just like it. Did feel at the time it was like, what? How? Why are they? Why and how are they doing this? Why are they launching this on? So I think they're either doing that where they're saying, right, we want to move away um, from Game Pass and we want to start selling games for seventy dollars again, which I get because Game Pass hasn't continuously climbed as it as it had, um, or they're looking to move away completely and become a publisher. Which I think, the more I think about them, maybe not. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're more likely to give um, give it a chance of, hey, if you want our games day one, then you're going to pay a very premium price from now on. But our main way of selling games is that we want you to buy them individually piecemeal, right? Um, uh, I think that's more the direction they're going, but, but then it, are they it's hoping, not a great look, is it? Are they hoping that people are going to go on the, the new cheaper tier that doesn't have the day one stuff and then next time a Forza comes out they'll be like oh well I'll have to just buy that for £70 yeah I think they will well that, that will upgrade the sub upgrade, and then forget yeah, about yeah, it yeah, and yeah. they get their revenue that way yeah yeah. I think, I, it, think because... I think that's what they're thinking yeah but like and for non Microsoft published stuff 
what like what difference does it make to them whether someone gets to play it day one or not? Something's if a new new indie game comes out on Game Pass, there's no saving to Microsoft if a portion of the audience can't play it day one, unless, as we say, it's more people going, well, I'll either just buy it or I'll upgrade. I, I don't know, man. I just don't see it. Well, yeah, I mean, but more people will buy it. Like, you know, Microsoft, get, see, yeah. Yeah. Microsoft get, get a revenue split from that. And if upgrade, mm. brilliant. And then, obviously, the all, all your subs, Netflix, the Amazon Prime, whatever it is, it's all based on the idea that the people will forget about renewals and whatnot. And then mm-hmm. all these millions made extra. So... I can see why, but yeah, this is basically a, fun, a you know a, a total, a totally ex- exception that the the strategy hasn't worked. Now they're having to go kind of go back to what what people like Sony and Nintendo traditionally do, which is it's kind of wild because everything think it was Game Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass. I I, I think you know it, they're still going to make it as compelling as possible, but also raise the price. And for those who want it, like us, probably will keep mm-hmm. paying it and and whatnot. But. Uh, but I, it makes it makes sense. I mean, I, I, it makes sense that they would charge for their games, and if we want them to maybe be better or more successful, then they're going to have to do that. I mean, it sucks I to mean, take it away. Yeah, but... it makes sense if they haven't been if they hadn't been pushing Game Pass for so many years, and yeah, and but... you know, crowing about how their games have been launched into Game Pass day one. You know, it's it, it makes sense if they hadn't already gone through the work that they had done and and sold this dream like it. I feel a little bit cheated. I do feel a little bit cheated. Over the past like three years, they've been going, and it's coming. All these games you're seeing are coming to Game Pass day one. But but they didn't say, actually, some of these games will come out after a period where we're going to stop doing that. You know, we've been yeah. sold this idea of what Game Pass is, and they are take. All right, they're not fully taking it away because there's a tier that you can upgrade to, but it's now getting to a point where, actually, where it used to be like, well, £7 a month. And, you know, I can play, you know, a full game for, for like a month for just seven pounds. We're now saying it's getting closer to 20 quid a month. Mm. And you're going, well, yeah, that's not the same sort of, you don't feel the, the benefit yeah, but, of that as much as you do. But that was never going to be around for long because that's like, that was all just to get people yeah. in, the, in the first place. Sure. Get them in the door. Sure, yeah. sure. But as a consumer, you feel cheated. Yeah, see, I don't, but only because I've always been on Ultimate, and I'll just continue to be on Ultimate, I guess. But um, if you weren't, that's yeah, they're, they're the pill, and you've got to imagine that's but the you majority don't feel of the people by them just raising the price over and over and over again. Is that well, what... e- e- everything goes up? Like you know, Prime, Netflix. I'm, I'm sad, Spotify. I'm sadly, I'm used to that. Um, but there must always, be a level where you go. Like I get what you mean, though, because that's the thing. Because you feel cheated because it's the fact that it's not just the price has gone up, but they're also taking functionality away as well. At mm. the same time, they're making it worse. Like in some of these cases, like with yeah. like with with this standard thing, it's like it's making it demonstrably worse than it was before. Mm. But also, yeah, price goes up. It's... And, and, I th- and, and it's, I think it's okay, like... Matt, for you to say, oh, you know, the, the the money I'm happy for paying Ultimate. But you do that thing where you stack it for three years and pay next to nothing yeah. for it over the three years. They're yeah. taking that away. That is going right. The, the the 13 month thing is to stop people from doing that. And the yeah, that's all I've done. The... I guess I mean, gone. how long? Like, I guess it's been so like you're going to go to paying twenty pound a month from doing that, or you know, no, I just, I just pay for a year up front and then have a new year every year. I guess rather than I, I mean, paying monthly yeah, is the... always more expensive anyway. Yeah, but the uh, difference now is huge. Like if you're if you're doing it like that way as well, because I mean, I was looking at this and like mine expires in I think it's like January 2026, and now I'm genuinely yeah. thinking, am I going to bother renewing for like ultimate level? Yeah, probably not. Like, I could probably just get core or whatever like that and then just pick up games if I want to later. It's, um, I wouldn't, I'm not sure I'd pay for Ultimate, honestly. You, you, you paid, you paid around 80 pounds, didn't you, for yes. the three years, right? Yeah. It's now 75 pounds for core for mm. one year. Yeah. So that's the thing. It's like, I mean, it's quite a massive increase, you know, that you're yeah. looking at there, like over that period Plus, of time. And I know we're doing some crazy math and we're talking about stuff. And yes, there will be ways of getting this cheaper, but it, but it is an impact, like it is, and it's definitely a conscious decision to try and that okay, we're not increasing memberships anymore. Let's try and get as much money out of the memberships that we mm. do have. I think that's definitely the feeling. Sorry, Sean. That's yeah. right. Is anyone feeling more these days? I think I think this was something that was inevitable over time. But I'm more and more I'm wanting to play something and being like, oh yeah, shit, that was on Game Pass, and it's not anymore. It happened this week with Tetris Effect. Oh really? And it's just and it's oh, happened right. enough 
that I'm just like, oh, dude, I fucking just might just buy the games, man. I that's that's, that's, that's <laughs> what it's working then. That's what they want. <laughs> and also you get a discount, I guess, for buying it when you're Game Pass. That's, well, this is it, yeah. So now I'm paying attention I've to the notifications. Like, here's what's leaving this week. Do you want your 20% off? Um, I don't know. Have, have any of us ever the... done that, by the way? Has any, have any of us ever bought no. a game like and taken advantage of a discount? Because I never I'm have, sure. really. I don't think I have, no. There's definitely times no, I've, I've considered it. It's a good, um, it's a good, uh, good idea. But I've never thought, oh, hang on, yeah, shit, yeah, it's, yeah. it's leaving. Or if it's leaving, I'll either play it or mm. I'm not playing it, and then I'll just move on. But mm. I can see why it'd be annoying. For oh, I'm going to play that game. It's now no longer on the service. Yeah, it's, going, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I also, I hate this. Like, you know, like we have to think about where our digital libraries are these days. Mm. And like, and I'm yeah. not, you know, I'm not I mean, saying like, everywhere. oh god, yeah. Microsoft is doomed or anything. Just. Part of me is like, well, if, if this is the way things are going and things are gradually going to get worse, there's a chance I might not get to the next Xbox, right? Maybe maybe I'll drift back to PlayStation next generation. But then there's going to be this huge gap in my library again. Not necessarily. And then just... <laughs> okay, well, that's true. Yeah, I'll probably change it on PlayStation. But you know, i probably have to buy it again and shit, right? Yeah. So part, And then part of me is like, I mean, it's not great that Steam just has a total fucking monopoly on PC stuff, but part of me is like, yeah, but I know. I know if I get it on Steam, it's gonna run on whatever I buy in future. It's always gonna be there. Yeah. But mm. I mean, but then obviously, even that isn't a guarantee, right? If somehow Valve went out of business, it's all you know shaky. Yeah, I, I, I find it's all. I mean, it's not that this isn't a conspiracy, but it's just like yeah, yeah. fascinating that they've um, you know had a day one game, day one Game Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass, where and maybe it's unfair to say, but I would say the last few years on Xbox have been lean. Let's mm -hmm. just say that. Mm -hmm. And obviously at this more, most recent um, Xbox showcase, like, fucking hell, look at all these games coming. This is, we're finally getting it where the day one of game passing would be incredible with all these titles that have been yeah, lined yeah. up. But something like, hang on, reason why they're yeah. taking it away now, now bang, yeah. it's, go, it's going up in price or it's taking it away. It's like, just when the games start yeah. coming, it's, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, hey, I guess that's business, but it's like, bloody hell, it's just, uh, I yeah. Mean, I, the other rumor there's been as well is that they're, they're I mean, this is a rumor, like we don't know if this is for certain yet, but well, about the fantasy, <laughs> fantasy <laughs> zone, not really a fantasy zone thing, but you know, the, about the rumors about the cuts in like advertising and stuff for some regions, you know, where they're not going to focus yes. on pushing the Xbox like hardware so much anymore, yeah, and maybe as focus instead on the cloud streaming stuff, you know, the fire stick and all that kind of stuff. It's, um, yeah, can I, interesting. can I make a suggestion to Microsoft, please? If you're uh, can you just call them like Xbox Game Pass One, Two, Three, or Four, <laughs> or Gold, Silver, Bronze? Good. Or even if your old Bronze sounds bad, but then go s Silver, Gold, Platinum. Fine. Do you know what I mean? Or just you know, A, B, and C. Because I'm so sick of this is core and this is console. What does that mean? What's the <laughs> difference? Uh, this is Ultimate and Ultimate for PC, and you know it's like oh Jesus, it is so confusing. Can you please just, oh, I've got gold. What do I get for gold? What do I get for diamond? <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's so much easier. It's all, yeah, it's all um, sort of subjective terms, isn't it? It's yeah, not, it's just phrases. It's helpful. Just yeah. the ultimate core and console. Yeah, the Xbox Shut ones up. are confusing. I'm sorry, the PlayStation ones are pretty confusing with Plus and Premium. Yeah, and plus and, yeah they're bad as well. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, oh, yeah, I want to simplify it, not make it more complicated. Yeah. Uh, James, when do these changes go up? Uh, changes, when do these changes come into effect? Uh, let's have a look. I don't. Maybe know. it's time to start stacking now while we still can. Basically, is what I'm thinking. September, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. Okay, there, but don't quote me on that. Cause I'm so, sure. if that's the case, I might have to look into stacking as much as I can before these things go up. I don't have to think about it for three years. Yeah, I'm okay. not sure I care, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I'm. At, I am definitely at the point now where I'm thinking. I don't know if I'm. You know, hey, it's a good week for Game I... Pass this week. Yeah, yes, like Flint Lock. Is, but... is Shim on there as well? Flock. Uh, oh, Flock, Shim yeah. isn't. I think Shim's only on. I don't, is it even on Xbox? I'm not sure. I don't think it's Maybe on Game Pass. Yeah. Um, but uh, Kanitsugami is the end of the week. Uh, Flock is out soon. And yeah, yeah, I saw good for you for Flock. Yeah, Flintlock. Whose who decision was it to re to release a game called Flock and a game called Flintlock in the same week? Yeah, that's uh, that's a piss take. Isn't Bad it? idea. Um, Dungeons yeah. of Hinterburg. I'm also in intrigued by that. Looks, that looks like isn't that qu quirky British game coming out on it as well? Yeah, that's which, coming out really soon, isn't it? Which the, is uh, which? Which one? Which one's oh, that? Uh, thank goodness thank you're, goodness here. you're here. here. Yeah, yeah. Is that Game Pass? I don't know. I think it is, Maybe. isn't it? Yeah, if you're on Game Pass Core Console Cloud. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're, if you're on Game Pass British, British quirky Game Pass. 
Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I might have done a Sean Bell there. It's not on Game Pass. I'm just going to say. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, it's not on Game <laughs> Pass. I apologize just now. In case that's that story done. Yeah. Uh, the next story is that we there's some information now about how about Hellblade Two and how it did. Um, in on Game Pass and in the charts. So this is according to uh, Matt Piscatello from the Sakana, you know, an, uh, the analysts. Yeah. He said Hellblade 2 was 37th overall in terms of full dollar sales for May 2024, putting it at 21st overall on the Xbox Series consoles, and it ranked 12th on Xbox in, ter- Xbox in terms of uh, monthly active users. And on PC, it didn't get into the top 100. So that was Did the, it not? Because uh, it was all over the Steam front yeah. page, but then I guess that's weird. It's just like the iTunes charts, right? It's like a, mm. it's an imprecise science, I mm. guess. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm surprised because obviously, you know, the immediate thing you jump to is, well, it was on Game Pass, so mate, of course, it, it was never necessarily going to sell that many copies, but I would have thought in terms of the user count, it would be high. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they've proved that is still it can still sell even if it is on Game Pass. You know, mm-hmm. like plenty of t- titles have done that in recent weeks, mm-hmm. even even though they're on Game Pass. So um, yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I like that game. I know not everyone did, but it is a shame. But I don't know. Yes, yeah, it's, yeah, it's rough. Very good, Matt. Yeah, it that was the problem. I thought. <laughs> yeah, I liked it. Should have made the game better, shouldn't they? Yeah. Um, no, that's not fair. Should have made a game. Uh, next <laughs> is. Uh, Nintendo have been accused of miscrediting external developers. Um, so this is inclu- according to employees working for service providers called LocalSoft and Keywords. And so these are translation uh, like uh, companies that translate uh, the, the games. And it says, so speaking to game developer, the sources claim that Nintendo failed to properly credit their work on titles including like Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door, Animal Crossing New Horizons, and Breath of the Wild as well. And they said that they've also alleged that Nintendo has a policy, this is the quote, they said, a policy not to not list the name of translators from external agencies in their game credits, which also forbids them from listing these titles on their CVs. And it says another source uh, who worked at LocalSoft also said that external translators have been required to sign non-disclosure agreements as well, which prohibit them from talking about... Uh, any work they've done on the on the project so i mean this is the, the full quote they said if you look at the credits for paper mario the thousand year door for instance you will notice only six people were credited for localizing a full title that's available in eight languages the source said uh in my experience a game like this would normally be localized by a team of around 25 translators some languages are skipped over completely like they got magically added to the game uh, for games like uh, Animal Crossing or Breath of the Wild, you don't really notice that 15 or 20 translators are not in the credits, as there are all the other names from their in-house translators, which is why Nintendo's policy of miscrediting might have flown under the radar. But almost every big title that Nintendo releases which uses external translators actually fails to credit translators. So that's I rubbish. What the thinking is behind that. It just seems like such an obviously shitty move yeah. that benefits them in no way... <laughs> yeah, at all. I don't, I don't it, get it. it means their cutscenes are sh- their uh, yeah their end cutscene is shorter. <laughs> I like um this debate came up a little while ago, right? That um there was I think it was Ubisoft were coming under fire from developers because they weren't in the credits despite the fact that they worked on the game for like uh, eight months or whatever. Yeah, they had a policy that you had to bit. work on it for two years or something. There was also the thing the with credits. Metroid Prime as well recently where they didn't like the original team yeah, was yeah, not. Yeah. Uh, not That's mentioned. right. Yeah. That's and mentioned. I've been thinking about this lot a lot recently because you know there's been a string of games coming out um with Mario's face on that they go, Yeah, don't who made this one? Don't worry about it. Know, yeah. uh, <laughs> Nintendo do, did, it's fine. I'd be <laughs> think, yeah, I'd be like I was thinking, how shit must that be for a third party developer that yeah. they can't say, No, this is us. This is we're making this game. Well, it's funny you should say that, Dave, because I was on oh, yeah. Wikipedia this week. Oh, uh, I thought you said I've got a third party developer <laughs> here. I, I made the last Mario game and I haven't had a penny. Um, no, so the, the Starfy games, um, where he plays a little star, um, appeared on the Switch Online thing. They were GBA games. Uh, apparently, they're pretty good. There's three of them. Um, right. No made by a studio called Tose. And apparently, it's one of the few games that they admit to having made. Because their thing is, they're a support studio, and apparently their policy is, we will have no creative input whatsoever, and you will not credit us. Apparently, that is that's their thing. I mean, I don't know okay. how most of the staff feel about that. 
Yeah, that is that's <laughs> weird. A fucking nightmare trying to get a job anywhere else after working there. But yeah, yeah, if you go on the Wikipedia page, it's like here's a list of games they worked on. P.S. We're sort of guessing with some of these because we don't. There's no hard evidence that they actually worked on them. It's just based on. So they're like sort of... they're doing like ghostwriting, but like for. Basically, yes. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how really weird? Strange. Really strange. Yeah, you got to assume it, the so team. I don't see how yeah. that benefits them. Really, I don't know. Yeah, it is. It is a. It is a weird one, isn't it? Being yeah. gatekeeper over over um credits. Like the the only, the only thing that I can wrap my head around is that, you know, I think studios like limiting the amount of people they have in their credits because it then becomes a little bit more exclusive, I guess. Um, but more importantly, they need to have a policy on what the threshold is to get a credit in a game. I I guess, and they've got to write that out. In, I mean, they've got to have, have rules a threshold, that they right. Do they need a threshold? Yeah, I don't know. Well, they don't You're need right. to, but I it's can't like see the back. Per there, must leaps, be, yeah. there must be a negative mm. for them to have. I mean, I long... suppose there's the, yeah, there's the they risk that like, someone could do a two weeks and then get kicked out for being shit. And they're like, yeah, I did the art on this game. Uh, maybe that's a risk. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Weird. So yeah. we've just had someone come into the chat and say, you can get cheap viewers here. Don't worry, our viewers that we have got are cheap. <laughs> They're about as cheap as you can get, mate. We don't need any any cheaper viewers. Uh, yeah, no, it's weird. I, like, I, I, if, you, if you do know why, uh, if anyone out there is listening and you do know why Nintendo or any other company um, would have limitations as to who they put on to their credits so please do get in touch because it'd be interesting to hear yeah, the I'll other suggest... side of it which i'm not saying that the other side of it makes sense and is the right thing to do just to get that yeah. out there i'm not defending <laughs> nintendo it's definitely going to be a good justification for this we just have no to... <laughs> not a good job but there is definitely a justification yeah. for it isn't it well, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be a good one but mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. they will have their reasons and it'll be wild to hear what they are or, yeah i'll suggest they'd come bother with the admin or like you know put lots of <laughs> in and out like yeah some of the names yeah but it's like who's been in there today you know, do they? How long were they there for? Is it a do, fake name to try did, and make us say something silly? Fair, did they do yeah. enough work to like you know <laughs> yeah. to to warrant a credit? Do you have to be there for a certain length of time? You know, to it's be like fair, this... you know, I used to at the end of our Patreon streams, I used to do, I used to list all the the patrons, yeah. and sometimes people would sign up on the day, and I'd be like, oh, got to re-render the video now. Oh yeah, so <laughs> we <laughs> actually think Nintendo are right, thanks, actually. So thanks. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck's sake. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Next story. Uh, this is all about game uh, the store because they've added some updates and changes that are happening. Um, so on the eighteenth of July, which will be is that the day this comes out? It's not, is it? I think it's Thursday. Is it Thursday? Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Thursday. Yeah. So game wallet uh, will not work anymore. Um, so you're not going to be able to add new funds or gift cards or anything like that. And then after the twenty first of August, all game wallet accounts will just be closed. And so they, according to a memo, it just says it's strongly urged that customers spend all their credit they have in their game wallet account on purchases at game.co.uk prior to the closure date. And then also, as of the 1st of August, there's going to be no new uh, in-store pre-orders accepted at all. And all existing pre-orders will be refunded for anything that is released after the 31st of January uh, 2025. Uh, anything before that is, is still fine. And this is apparently because they want to simplify what game does uh and funkos well yeah but then the, the, this rumor is persisting isn't it that it's because some burke procured a new till system that's the thing yeah it's that just but, doesn't so do is... anything that they exactly <laughs> so this is also allegedly because the Fraser's group want to simplify it so that they only do sales and returns because that's all the tills do, <laughs> <laughs> which is a bit of a that's problem. Funny. I mean, it sounds insane, but anyone who's worked for a large organization will be no stranger to someone procuring a bit of software or something that actually doesn't fucking do yes. what it's supposed to. So it's not that <laughs> That's straight in there. Uh, Whoa, <laughs> that accusation there. <laughs> but then the other thing that, that's happened just uh, just today is that they're also going to stop selling like physical, like the currency cards as well, like for the eShop and things like that. They're, okay. they're going to be not going to be sold anymore either. Yeah. This yeah, is it's... the slowest death of all time, isn't it? It's excruciating, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's, why would they stop selling the years. currency cards? Surely I've they're no idea. pretty it's... good. You can get a lot of them in a store. Like yeah. they're not yeah, taking I, 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 I assume the cut for that is just shit. Yeah, true. Maybe. Or I, I reckon. I reckon they, but they might not get any money from selling those things, and it's just a way to get people in their store. Mm. 
I would. Yeah, I, I, right. That's probably more likely, right? Um, Alternatively, the tills that they bought don't allow them to process <laughs> the cards. Yeah. Yeah, well, that. <laughs> Harry went to a belong last week oh, yeah. um, for a party, and I walked in and said to the bro, it, it was like like six o'clock on a Sunday and they were still open. Mm. I walked in, it was absolutely rammed. And I said to one of the members of staff, I said, is it, do you get busy in here then? He said, it's like booked out for the next two months. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, I, I would not have predicted that. No. <laughs> well done. And then walked <laughs> off. <laughs> and then I walked out and there was an empty game opposite uh, with signs up saying everything's half price now if you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, no, I don't want, I don't want that at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what a strange, I cannot believe it still exists. It's yeah. just mad, isn't it? Like you say, like there's obviously there's been plenty of times over the years where it's like, oh shit, game are going out of business. But there was yeah. always like, drama it was like oh fuck this is happening what a seismic event whereas now it's yeah. just this very slow sort of suffocation it's yeah and it is that I kind of thing this... where everyone's just like is this still going <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. it's, it's... i mean i mentioned this every time but the the, the the time when they were going out of business mm. so they were selling games for pennies yeah, yeah, and yeah. you just went in there and were like i'll buy these eight games for what 12 pounds yeah go on then there you go um and you'd walk out with just shit it was like dj hero but like fully sealed and it was like three pound <laughs> fifty and you go what the fuck is going on here and then they come they into some money back. about a yeah. week later and they were like we will give you 50 pounds for any five games oh, God, I remember that, yeah. and it was like what yeah. what are you talking about so we were bringing like i remember i would like i had like I would go to Game Station. I think Game Station were around at that time and buy like old Fifas for like a pound. Put them on the <laughs> put them on the thing and go. There you go. There's my <laughs> there's my ten games. Give me the money. <laughs> it's like I was just made like a shit ton of money. It was. I'm sure it wasn't that simple, but it was a weird fucking uh, system. It's been a and, mess, um, isn't it, for so long? It has been a mess mm. for so long. It has been, and I cannot believe it's still going. But there you so, go. Yeah, so if anybody has game wallet credit spend it now get it because, used yeah you won't be able to yeah. if you want to trade in go to cx and if you want rewards go somewhere else no mm -hmm. pre-order so they won't sell the cards they won't pre-order you can just buy games day one for now or at some point i guess yeah probably yeah no more midnight launches guys no xbox all access man. oh man <laughs> midnight launches i never did missed. one and i'm now sort of annoyed i never did i did i did the 360 uh. one and it was yeah. like that. That was, I mean, that was horrible, wasn't it? That whole 360 launch, in the sense, yeah, that there was the, that whole thing the about. Like, we're, we're I didn't go to the, I didn't go to the midnight one, did I? Because the two days before it came out, mm. they rang me up and said, "Yeah, you haven't got one." Even though I'd pre-ordered on the day pre-orders went live, yeah, they only had like three consoles come in, oh, shit. and they said, "Yeah, you haven't got one," and uh, and I was, you know, that story, right? Yeah, you got it from someone else, didn't you? It was it yeah. I went. Else? It went to HMV and and I was going to all the shops and saying, "Have you got any three sixties in? I, I need one on launch day." Mm -hmm. And they were all laughing at me. And then I asked this one guy in HMV, and he went, "Actually, I I don't. I've got one because I, I work here, and I don't want it. If you meet me here at nine o'clock, you can buy it." And I was <laughs> like, "You're fucking kidding me, right?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he did, and he came round. My flat that night and we played it together it was a bit weird and that person's <laughs> name was weird. james farley <laughs> <laughs> um uh yeah no so i did that one i did the psp launch oh, yeah. i did the wii launch mm -hmm. um at midnight and um famously the playstation 4 one in the tesco's where no one knew oh, it yeah, was yeah, actually no happening existed, oh yeah, i remember that you story i've never that. told that yeah. before I remember yeah, I know, several yeah. times. I yeah. got taken the piss out of because I mentioned it too many times, apparently. <laughs> so I'm not going to do it again. Um, did you? You must have done midnight launches, Matt. I was just thinking, um, I was there for the Dreamcast one uh, back in, I think that, was, that wasn't EB, I think that was the game days. Yeah. And I can't remember, I mean, I, I know I was there for like PS4, but that wasn't midnight because I got that from Blockbuster and they weren't doing a midnight launch. I mean, Blockbuster, I mean, uh, ask your parents if you don't know what that is, but that, that's an old uh, video rental shop. Yeah. Um, and then didn't get 360 on launch. Blockbuster video. Wow. Yeah. What a difference. Uh, PS, oh, PS3, Blockbuster. Yeah, 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 PS4 wasn't Blockbuster. I don't know. Either way, I'm not sure. That's. I think I'm... 
I'm, I think I merged two jingles then. What is no, that? that is, wow, that is right. what a difference. No, that is right. It's Blockbuster Video. Wow, what a difference. I don't remember really? That. Yeah. What? That is a dreadful slogan. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the whole thing was like, you know, they always said they had more copies of like whatever blockbuster was it was that? than anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. What a difference. Yeah, I can't remember so what I'm Pierce, fr- into the Peter Pierce Free and, and Resistance Fallen Man from Blockbuster. You backed the wrong fucking horse there, boy. <laughs> yeah, but I couldn't get it as a 360 on day one, or I think I was like still at home or whatever. I couldn't bother, but I could get the, the Pierce Free. Day one, so um, Blu-ray, maybe. Oh, yeah, I do I, remember I, the whole um, sort of like you know, next gen doesn't start until it's all the PS3. Yeah, oh god, yeah, and he was all on his own talking about resistance, full of man. <laughs> Great game. I, I got PS3 in, in the sweet spot where they had HDMI ports as standard, mm. and they also had the PS2 backwards compatibility. Uh, yeah, so yeah. where you were like you like built into the machine. So I got it just at the right time. I mean, was, the games were shit on it, so I didn't really play it much, but <laughs> but I did get it at the right time. That was a fucking dreadful console, wasn't it, the PS3? Yeah, massive as well. Bad. Massive. Massive. I uh, never owned one. No, never had one. PS3? Yeah, never had one. Wow. You didn't miss I never much. had a PS1. Can you believe that? I, I uh, no, really me went the wrong way. No, I, straight to the... no, I didn't either, because uh, sat in it. it turns no out no one had a here. PS1. I didn't, I didn't own a PlayStation 1, no, I, like friends did, um, but I did not uh, have one. Were you jealous? Um, yeah, I think I, I must have borrowed one to play like Metal Gear Solid, because I remember playing like, hang on, no, no, that was, that was what was one of the Zone of the Enders? That was, that was PS1, wasn't it? Uh, PS2. PS2. Mm. Well, okay, but I remember playing the original Metal Gear Solid 1 demo, so maybe I borrowed a PS1. <laughs> It was Probably GTA 3. Like, that was PS2 as well, Matt. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was on my Saturn, yeah. I, I, I just remember like me playing my Sega Saturn and Nights into Dreams and going, wow, which was a good game. Mm. Yeah. Going, wow, Nights into Dreams, I've flying around. And all my mates talking about Final Fantasy VII. Like, <laughs> like as if it, it was this like mad world that I, I just had no idea about because I was flying around that big ball lady thing. Was the <laughs> see, I had the same thing, but it was like N sixty because I went, I went N sixty four for that generation, and it was like everyone was. But then, yeah, we had. Oh, to, I couldn't afford one M. Mate, but... mate, N sixty four was was mainstream. That was fine. Yeah, Goldeneye, yeah. mate. That was the coolest game on the planet. Yeah, you were killing instinct and, and Ocarina of Time. Which was, uh, which okay. was really well done, Ocarina. James. Ocarina yeah, so of Time was a very good then. game, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, back then you famously didn't call it that. <laughs> <laughs> and WCW No Mercy. That was, oh, that uh, was no, incredible. WCW versus NWO Revenge. That was my favourite. Yeah, I think I think I've heard No Mercy, but yeah, those wrestling games were oh, incredible. Okay. Okay. Trip down memory. What a lovely trip <laughs> down <laughs> memory lane. Speaking of which, uh, this is the last news story. Um, the Sonic Team. Uh, so this is uh, uh, Takashi uh, Lizuka, who, who's the uh, the head of Sonic Team. He said that he wants to make a Sonic RPG one day. Um, this is what he said. He said, personally, I like role-playing games. Uh, the RPG game format is a lot of fun. And I've even thought to myself, you know, for the past 30 years, we haven't done a Sonic RPG. And I'm questioning myself, why haven't we done a Sonic RPG in all this time? Bioware did one. Well, no, I'm coming to that. Okay, how sorry. have we gotten to thirty years? <laughs> have we gotten to how, how have we gotten to thirty years with no RPGs? So I'd like to hopefully work on a Sonic RPG at some point before I retire from Sega. But you know, that's just a dream right now. There are no concrete plans at this point. I mean, yeah, and as as Sean said, Bioware did do Sonic Chronicles: The Dark Brotherhood mm-hmm. in 2008 for the DS, uh, but that was wasn't a Sonic team. I never played it. Oh, no, I'm sure some Sonic fans probably will say it's great. I don't know. <laughs> what, what always, what always gets James, me, you're a Sonic fan. <laughs> I didn't play it. Is when, I, when I hear about something like that, and I'm like, and it was on the DS, so I definitely could have played it for free. Because no, <laughs> <laughs> no one was buying DS games at that point. Oh, um, man, baby. Yeah. Um, James, can you stream Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood, please? Yeah, you I probably could, could actually. It's, it would be possible. I mean, I do have a copy of the original cartridge. Well, there you go. So, you yeah, know, I could uh, definitely do that. Yeah. Really good. That I hate that joke. Just to let you know, James, I hate I hate that joke. <laughs> and I hear it on so it. many... No, it's not it. just you. I hear it on loads of other podcasts where they're like, well, I do own the original... Go- I hate it. Shut up. Le- legal, legal backup. Well, I'm going <laughs> to keep saying it. Now I know it annoys you. I'm just going to keep saying it. <laughs> um, I, yeah, it does sound like he's trying to cover up 
the fact that there was a Sonic RPG. It's like gaslighting us. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, it's, uh, so Sonic RPG has never been one, has there? There's no. never been see, what, anyone a, see Sonic a Sonic R- RPG anywhere. Yeah, I no, can't. there's one here. No. Never <laughs> been one. Has Is Sonic there? RPG in the room of you right now? No, exactly. <laughs> Um, okay, that's enough news for us all, isn't it? It is, yeah. Mm. Good. Yes. Let's get to what you've been playing. And I know James probably wants to talk about Sonic because we've just been talking about Sonic. But I decided this morning that we were going to start with me. <laughs> uh, so I could just put my feet up for the rest of the show. Um, I've been playing a few games this week, uh, which is uh, unlike me of, of recent... Uh, I'm so glad that we seem to be coming to the end of the... Uh, the uh, d- horrible summer period of 2024 it has been pretty the weather's been shit there's been no good games coming out we've got the um uh what is it that nez game is coming out in a couple of days i'm quite looking forward to that that bad boy yeah Yeah, yeah. pre-ordered it but uh can't wait for that i Uh, have from game uh (laughs) oh fuck (laughs) (laughs) i've been playing concord the, oh, good. Uh, game that everyone thought was going to be a uh, a rip-off of Guardians of the Galaxy because it looked like a rip-off of Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, the cutscene and... did. Yeah, yeah, yeah we the knew the game, game wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then we none of us expected it to be a hero shooter. No. It is a hero shooter. I have played the beta. I've only played one game mode, which has essentially been like, um, you know, the one in Call of Duty where you pick up the dog tags after you kill them. Oh, yeah, yeah. It kill was basically that. Yeah. yeah, kill confirmed. Yeah, it's basically kill confirmed. It's really, really good. It's yeah. really good. It's slick as fuck. It looks decent. The characters all seem interesting. The weapons are great. The shooting feels brilliant. The power ups are great. Um, I really, really like it. But I was sitting there playing it saying, I was thinking of the games that have come out recently, which have been competitive shooters like this, um, you know, X Defiant and um, uh, was it Rogue Company was another one uh, mm-hmm. that I got into for a bit. And then the finals, which was probably the best of all of these that, that I've played recently. And I just think, I, you know, I, I as I understand it, those games I've just mentioned did find an audience, albeit not like a very big mainstream one. I think the finals did pretty pretty well compared to the others. Um, but I just, I, I think, yeah, I'm enjoying playing this, but I know that I'm not going to be playing it regularly once it comes out because I need to convince three or four other friends to play it. And um, it's not, it doesn't stand out on its own two feet enough to be like whoa this feels different it feels very familiar it so, feels very road company it feels very very overwatch does it feel know? like destiny um, at all because it seemed so it looked it's funny, isn't and it? even you, sounded even like this the way the scopes worked remind me so much of destiny it's um not unreal. visually i mean if you are looking at it I, I i wouldn't pick up destiny from it but playing it certainly feels it's it's like a floaty shooter like halo or or um or destiny like it, it certainly to actually play and the actual gameplay feels a little bit more destiny but obviously there's so many different weapon types in that it's hard to nail it down to a single sort of game so can you not see this so, doing like a hell divers 2 then like and being like a sort of i don't hit? think i don't think it's unique feeling enough and i don't like hell divers 2 the reason why that was so successful and you know a lot of people saying it's the price and it wasn't that wasn't what caught people's attention because there are free to play games or there are cheap games mm. that don't fly off the shelves like Hell Divers do. Uh, two does. Hell Divers Two was um, visually stunning, right? And when you saw clips of it, it made you want to play it. You when you saw those bugs climbing over the thing and people jumping back and throwing stuff, and then you had the funny stuff where where people would like go near a rocket ship and start cheering and hugging or whatever, and they'd explode and they'd fly all over the place. You watched tons and tons of clips on that and social media, and everyone you watched went, you went, shit, I need to play this. I need to play this. And it, there was friends of mine going, I need, I need to get this game. It's, it looks fucking brilliant. I, I mean, I'll send you clips of this, and you'll go, oh, it looks like Overwatch. There won't be, you won't be looking at it going, I need to play this. Despite the fact that they've clearly done a lot of really good work on it. it mm. clearly, it's clearly fun to play. It's really nicely stylized. The characters seem great. 
it's I, I I've I've wonder like I know personally I can only talk from my personal point of view it's not a game that I'm going to be playing because I have to convince a number of people to buy this game because it's not free to play. I think it's thirty quid. This is yeah, coming it's out another. Before. It's like like Helldivers two. They're releasing it at like slightly yeah. cheaper. So I need to convince them to get this game. And there's games like um, what was that dodgeball game that I really liked? Uh, oh, uh, Knockout City. Knockout City, right? That was a game where we actually did play that for a couple of months and went. Do you know what? This is really fucking good. And then we stopped. Mm-hmm. Because the drive of those games isn't really there as uh, like it was before, and Overwatch feels like a long time ago now. Overwatch exploded and it did really, really well. Obviously, I think this feels too, or at the very least, it looks too much like Overwatch for people to go. This is unique, and I want to play it. And and we've said it before on the show: launching a new IP like this is so fucking hard at the moment because you've got to stand out. And it's got to blow people's minds when they're watching it. I think the finals helped in that the destructibility and looking at how good look good looking that game was had people going, "Oh shit, this is mad." Um, and the only other competitive shooter that I've really seen blow up recently is that um, body cam game. Oh yeah, Have you yeah, seen yeah. that? Yeah. And you look at terrifying. it, and it doesn't matter how like people are saying it's really hard to control because. Mm. You know, you're all over the place. The character's all over the place, and the, the perspective is wrong. Can I hold just for a minute? Yep. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Let... Yeah. What's the time stamp? Can I get some water? Yeah, yeah. All right. Go. Okay, I'll be back in a second. Yeah, I heard that. Get some I'll alarm, s- maybe. I'm gonna switch my camera off because I'm not wearing any trousers. Leave it on. Yeah. On. Leave it on. 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 Ah, oh, boost. Say. Ooh, give the crowd what they want. <laughs> Anyone any questions? Quick, yeah, any questions quick, while the other two have gone. Everyone, quick. How's everyone doing? Do you know what I'm going to do while we're. While I'm back, baby. Oh, well, James has gone now. Okay, quick, quick while James has gone. Quick, ask questions. Uh, yeah, that was. Yeah, that was. Oh, people heard that, did they? The... Yeah, I could hear it. Mind. Yeah, it's right outside the window, but I was worried that it was ours. Oh, shit. Um, so yeah, that's like a proper fear I have that like when we're away, our car's going off and pissing everyone off. Mm-hmm. Like it's <laughs> happened once. Uh, it's massive, Scientologist. Next question. James um, got, oh, how big is it? Yeah, yeah. How big is James's, or how big is how big are ours? Well, I mean, it. I mean, we can, we can all assume. Answer, we, yeah, 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 we can all assume it's James's. <laughs> James, the tripod Farley, they they, they do call him. <laughs> He's back. He's back. Tripod's back. He's got his pant- pants on now. Yeah. It's hot. I imagine. Mm-hmm. It is hot. It is hot, actually, to be fair. All right, we're good. good? Ready when you are, mate. Yeah, sorry. What was I talking about? Um, what was the last thing I said? Uh, throwing me off. Sorry, guys. Concord. Five <laughs> point. Right, right. Uh, okay, yeah. Let me be, yeah, sorry. You're talking about body okay. cam game, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So, you know, like trying to convince five of my friends to buy this game and stick with it is going to be hard enough as it is i i I, you know there have been more unique games that we've not done that with and you know i look at the the games that really have blown up and you know you look at say the finals i think what helped with that is just the destructibility and just how good it looks and then there's that that body cam game that's all over um uh like tiktok or whatever you look at it and you just go I don't even know. Like the game is meant to be really difficult con- to control, and mm. I, I don't know if I, it's fun to actually play. But you look at it and go, "I want to play it. I've got to play it at some point." Like, if if you haven't seen it, search body cam game on on YouTube. There's loads of streamers playing it, and it looks incredible. Like it's the best looking game I've ever seen, hands down. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's blowing people's minds. I mean, it feels like it also feels like. Yeah, as someone says, um, Gary said in the show, uh, in the chat, it feels too real, and I totally get that because I played the uh, World War Two game that came out recently, Hell something. Oh, Hell Let um, Loose. Hell Let Loose, and that was nasty enough. That mm-hmm. felt like a little bit too. Oh, I'm mm-hmm. not sure I like this. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, body cam looks even worse than that. Um, but yeah, it's. I do wonder how well this is going to do when it launches. If I had to 
put money on whether it's going to be success successful or not i'd put it on not um but then i also have to remember that i'm i'm kind of uh oblivious to how well these games do you mm. know we we get messages about how good a- a- apex um Le- legends, legends is doing yeah. Yeah. you know and f- that's completely off my radar at this point uh, it's funny, yeah like, we do don't we so not jumping ahead to one of one of mine's a free to play game not going to talk about yeah. this week and if you look at the the free to play bit of the Xbox store it's fascinating because you know obviously like like online games or you know persistent online games games you know service games whatever tend to get shut down if they're not hitting you know certain targets or whatever but and every time it happens, I always refer back to this uh, John Carmack's thing um, about when Echo VR got shut down, and he's explaining that actually it's not that hard, really, to, to keep an online game going. Depends on certain, you know decisions that were made about how the, how the game was put together and stuff, but actually it's it's pretty doable with like one member of staff. Yeah, and if you go on the Xbox Store, there are so many free to play games there that you just like. Happy Wars is still going. I played that <laughs> on the 360, and it was rough then. But that still Wars. that still exists, that. right? And there's there's tons of games where you just like these are st- someone's keeping these running. It's true. I mean, <laughs> yeah. there's still people playing Rainbow Six Vegas. I'm not it's, joking. Yeah. There seriously are on Xbox. Incredibly, there's people yes. still playing it. Heroes, yeah. we call them yeah. fucking heroes. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's uh, just interesting what what survives and what doesn't, and whether that's like how often is it a business decision, and how often was it. Like an an early like tech decision that then made it impossible or or whatever to keep it keep something running. I don't know. It's just it's interesting. Yeah. Um. Another game I've been playing this week is a, a game that I've played before. Neon White has launched mm. on Game Pass on your your consoles, and I was like, look, I've got to just load this up again and play it. And oh my god, that game is still as good as it's that, ever been. My that word. must be even better with like a better controller, honestly. Better controller. I cannot believe I played rate. that game on fucking Isn't fucking hand. Mm. Yeah, but the frame rate was wasn't too bad on the Switch. Um, I think it got worse in the later levels. That the the last boss in particular was quite ropey in places. Right. Um, but just seeing it in like 4K. And mm. uh, with a nice controller on a big screen is is like another level. It's great. It's so much fun. If you've not played Neon and White and you've got Game Pass, give it a go. Every time the characters start talking, just skip it, skip it. and then just focus on replaying levels over and over and over again. Um, God, because that, that game, we I mean, we, we game. made this point back in the day, but I think it bears repeating. It is a it's a speed running game, yep. but where the figuring out the speedrun stuff is really accessible and really interesting it's it's very i mean it does like eventually reach a point where it's just about execution but actually there's a really interesting process in every level of figuring out an alternate way of doing it that saves you a bunch of yeah, time yeah. and it makes yeah. that experience like really accessible and really interesting so if getting you, through if you... the levels is a piece of piss like yeah. it, it, the way the way it's set up so if you've not if you don't know what Neon White is, it's a first-person shooting game where it's got a start and an end to each level. You've got to get to the end of the level as quickly as possible while killing all of the enemies. All the enemies have to be dead. Along the way, you pick up cards, which are your guns, uh, and they have two uses. You can either have, say, for example, you can pick up a, um, uh, a pistol, and that will either give you three bullets or you can discard it and when you discard it it gives you a a, a quick ability so for the pistol it's a double jump so you if you like first of all you're going oh it wants me to jump here and then i pick up the pistol and then i shoot that one and then i can use it to double jump but then you go actually if i save this and use a different weapon on that character i've got a double jump to avoid this whole bit of the level Mm -hmm that I don't need to do, and your brain starts going, oh, if I reshuffle the cards, or, you know, not reshuffle them, but if I switch the cards out and mm-hmm. do things that it's not, the level is specifically designed to use this card, then this card, then this card, if I ignore that linear process, I can do some really fucking cool shit here um, and skip big parts of the level, and it it just, it's so good. It does, however, still have a bug that the original game had that 
is mind blowing to me that it still does this. Mm. Um, so the problem that it had was that when you complete a level, it saves your time and it takes you on the right hand side of the screen. It shows you your time compared to your friends, and then it has your uh, the global time. Right. The problem with the Switch version is that that would only work when you boot the game up and start playing it, which oh, meant right. if you if you put your Switch on um, uh, standby, it would save and then and then went and played it later that evening. It would save your times, but wouldn't be able to upload those times to the the, the server. So you would go right. Okay, it's not logging my times against my friends. I don't really care. But also, it'd be really nice to compare to my friends, and it might push them forward to yeah. to try and find out how I did it or whatever. It's still there, and it's there with the Xbox version. If you want your times to be logged, you have to reboot the game from scratch every time, is which crazy. is less of an issue on the Xbox because it loads quicker. But yeah, so if you use still. like quick resume, it's like you, it's not. Quick a... resume, yeah, yeah. It, it won't. Go, it says um, error next to the next to the. Uh, the scoreboard and i'm like Shame. fucking hell man how have they not worked that shit out mm -hmm. that's like that's essential for a game like this that it, it makes the uploads as um as quickly as humanly possible it's really annoying because i've already like I've, I've done like the first four no the first three sets of missions and already I've got a couple of those ones where I've beaten the developer times. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I want that on. I want, a, I want, because <laughs> like Chet's playing it for the first time. And yeah. I want him to go, what? <laughs> it took me 33 seconds and it took David seven. How is that even possible? See, that's what I did when I played the Switch one. Because I remember like boosting it up and then like, uh, you know, seeing other people's scores and be just like, oh, for fuck's sake. I thought it was yeah. really well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's like... it is crazy. But it's actually really simple to pull off some of the stuff that it asks you to do to get those mm -hmm. those lower times. It's pretty, mm -hmm. it's pretty uh, incredible. Um, the last game I've played is Switch Sports because over the weekend... Oh, yes basketball was added and i tell you what it's probably the best game on there really um we it had did sound so good. much fun with it it sounded good well when i saw a link i think i sent it to you guys like i think you i think someone new gamer did a piece about it i was like oh the four player sounds good this might actually work and what did they say about the four player i'm trying to i don't i think they just said it's a bit mad how you can all play it once and it's maybe like first if you miss you're out or i don't know it seemed fun and i was like maybe us four could play but um well, but you're enjoying that. it that's the main thing yeah, so the two game modes we've played are the two on two and the um, the shooting. Um, like, so there's one where you all stand in a row and you're shooting continuously at the at the three point shots at the, at the mm. basket, um, and every like fifth ball is stripy and worth five points or whatever. So you got like, just like normal but, basketball rules then. Yeah, exactly. normal basketball <laughs> rules. But also like the balls, like clash off each other so okay. not only when you're playing with four people you can't just go yeah just go crazy as far as you can you gotta wait for your opportunity to shoot because if you're shooting at the same time as someone else they clash and you don't you know you don't get a basket i i don't know what it is the boys cannot play it they really? get like two or three baskets and i'm on like 40 <laughs> and they're fuming like i'm absolutely smashing them i was doing the gritty across the room uh <laughs> like <I> was <laughs> celebrating and they were like, why <laughs> um uh yeah so th that that was fun but for us we've really been enjoying the two on two joe's been playing and um it's look it's not precise there's there's some annoying stuff where when you haven't got the ball you shake the controller to try and get into a new position but if you're right. defending that player you're just shaking it as well so basically it's two characters just running back and forth <laughs> free movement would have been better yeah. you know in that in that yeah, situation yeah. just let us use we've all got an analog stick let us use our analog stick so we can put, position mm. ourselves the only thing that i think well maybe that's why they didn't do it is because you could it maybe it's too easy to find space if you do that i guess mm. um but what you can do you can pass by pressing a button you can bounce the ball on the floor um uh, and you can shoot by holding uh, Z and then and then um, shooting. It it did take us a little while to realise that actually, if you hold the Z button, you don't jump up to shoot straight away. So the when we worked that out, that was quite fun because you'd hold Z, you'd get ready to shoot, and then the person defending would be like 
jumping around in front of you, hoping that they're getting the timing right, and you actually just waiting for them to drop down the other shot. It was just really good fun. Like we had really good fun with it. I mean, it's not as precise as you want to be, but you kind of expect that going into switch sports these days. I'm surprised. Um, I thought I yeah, because I mean the other stuff was it. Well, I mean, see, I kind of enjoyed switch sports. I didn't think it was like absolutely terrible, but you know, I mean, golf was was awful. Like the yeah that addition golf that was golf was appalling. When you think about it, golf was appalling. Tennis was okay, yeah. but no better than yeah. um as Wii tennis. Bowling was worse than it was on Wii mm-hmm. bowling. Yeah, and then the sword fighting was you know fun for a minute, and then mm-hmm. you stopped. Badminton, it was like, why am I playing this over tennis? <laughs> you know, it, 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 this uh, volleyball was another one as well, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. And you just go, oh, really, it's what a fucking weird way to ruin that series <laughs> but thankfully the basketball was quite fun so football do you remember football yeah football. Yes. i don't think anyone ever <laughs> played that it was absolutely yeah. I, I bought one as like straps to to play yeah. you know yeah. with, uh, so yeah. right, mate. man so shame right. i was like this could be Dreadful. great and it was not great look if you've got this game and you're a family of four then give it a go because just just this because it's a weekend that you'll have a laugh with anyway and then put it away again for good. Take it to CEX. And that's what I've been playing this week. I would like to hear from James next because he's been back on the Sonic machine. <laughs> I have. I mean, I've, I've bought Sonic Superstars because it was discounted and I managed to get it for like 18 quid, like on Switch. And Pretty uh, sure it was more than that. No, it was, but I had, I had gold coins. Uh, it, okay. was, uh, it was it was, like... Murray Math. Murray Math. Otherwise <laughs> known as currency. <laughs> So yeah, so in a was... way they were paying me to buy it. So exactly, yeah. <laughs> well, and I'll tell you. No, actually, it's... <laughs> is this the one? This the one come out last year that you said you it's... definitely weren't buying. It's yeah. the one. Yeah, it's the one I said I was definitely not buying until it went down in price, and then it did. Oh and, right, okay. Then it was yeah, a... it's also the one that came out at the same time as Mario Wonder. Like pretty much, which was oh, that's um, right, and 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 the BBC were running articles because they don't know better, saying it's the battle of the nineties <laughs> all over again, yeah. a Mario game that everyone can't wait to play, and a Sonic game that most people doesn't know exists. <laughs> yeah, um, it looks nice. I mean, graphically, it looks gorgeous. Yeah, but... and so I mean, I, I fucking love this game. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> Okay. No, I'm not joking. Seriously, I've had a really good time with this, and I was really surprised because it's 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 the best 2D Sonic game I think I've played since Sonic Mania, like easily, Ooh. and it's 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 actually great. And so, first of all, it's not pixel art. Obviously, it's uh, you know it's like sort of polygon like 3D, but then you know in, you know in 2D, and it really works. And they do such interesting things with it in places as well. Like where it, like one of the like the later stages, it like uses all like this sort of like weird, not pixel art, but it like sort of changes to looking like you're sort of looking through like a CRT TV or something. Mm-hmm. And it looks it looks really really interesting. But the other thing that they've done to it is they've changed up like what the Chaos Emeralds do and made them actually have kind of a point. So, you know, you pick these up, you know, during the game, and this time around, um, each each time you get one, they give you a new ability um, that you can use, like, you know, uh, through levels, to, you know, to get through things a bit easier. So it has stuff like um, like this bullet one where you can, like, you know, zoom off in one direction very quickly. Another one where you, it, like, creates like, this big vine that, like, travels up in the air and you can, like, sort of climb it. There's another one which creates, like, clones of you, so there's, like, tons of them attacking enemies and all this kind of stuff. So it's kind of interesting because and, and, uh, was, I mean, there's another one as well which, like, adds, like, um, you can see hidden platforms that you couldn't see, you know, like before. And it sounds boring. It doesn't sound, like, great, but it really adds something to the levels as well because the thing that I really like about this as opposed to a lot of the other like 2D ones that I played over the years is it really is like the exploration is great like in the levels it's not all about got to get through this fast and all that kind of thing you really can it's like explore famous catchphrase yeah, yeah. got to get through this fast <laughs> <laughs> writing that one down that's a title episode down baby Gotta get through this fast. But no, it's like they're they're really interesting to like to explore, like around the uh, everything. I mean, I finished I finished the game, like in the sense I finished like the base game, like got through it with Sonic, and then I got all the Chaos Emeralds. Now I'm going back because there's another of the shitty friends that's been added um, for this um, you know for this one round. And so once you've done that, you then you then like can unlock you know, the true ending and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, the difficulty is like kind of perfect as well. Like it's it's. Just right, like I've found so That's far. That's what I was going to ask you, because I'm like, 
looking at this and thinking, shit, the boys might dig this, you know. <laughs> yeah, and you could I mean Is you can play it multiplayer as well. And but I don't know. I mean, I've not tried it, but it probably wouldn't be very good. But um, it is possible yeah. uh, to play it that way. And it's yeah, the the main the base game with Sonic is not difficult because it doesn't have the um, what's it called the uh, like live system or anything like that. It's like you know you die, you just go back to your checkpoint and you know continue on. So you can kind of like brute force through things anyway if you if you yeah you know, if you really want to. I mean, the yeah. only thing that is not great about it is the music, which is just mm. and it's not terrible music. It's just totally forgettable. Like I can't remember any of it like at all really. You know, like from That's from playing it and. And also, like, the bosses as well. Like, they've got really interesting boss designs. And, like, this is... I, I mean, when was it? It was, like, oh, maybe six months ago. I did that, you know, Sonic Till I Die stream. And I played, like, Sonic Sonic 4, you know, like, Episode 1 and 2, which were terrible games. Like, they were absolutely awful, like, really. And, like, particularly the boss design was so bad. Like, it was just, like, so many bosses where it's like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing here. It's terrible. Whereas <laughs> sorry, this... sorry, I, I know, sorry, Dave. I know you said six months ago. That's two years ago you did that. Was it two years ago? Okay. <laughs> You're joking. Seriously. No, yeah, Sonic 2 or Die is two years ago. Man alive. Oh, damn. Time just six months, <laughs> just, just six months ago. Was it? Oh, I don't know. It was still that, sort it? of COVID times. It was. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's it's so like the the, the boss designs in this are really great as well because it's like really clear what you're supposed to do and it's like you know kind of achievable. The only thing I've heard is that um, the the part of the story that I'm working on now, which is this shitty friend that they've added, once you get to the end of that, the final boss for that is apparently ridiculous. Like, like ridiculously difficult. And it's like, you know, the, the difficulty level goes from like 0 to 10, like completely. And it's like one hit kills and the whole sort of thing. That, and it, like, it takes 10 minutes to beat as well. And everyone says it's crazy. But the rest of the game has been fantastic so far. And it's so much more coherent um, than, than like say Sonic Frontiers like I, it's so much better than that like in terms of it feels like a complete yeah, package a where the game though isn't it I know but uh, this feels Frontiers. like completely like there's this is like a complete package where they've like everything kind of fits together whereas Sonic Frontiers always felt like okay it does feel like it was a sort of like an asset flip game if you know what I mean you know it was like it it didn't I don't know the world's never really clicked for me like properly and um this is great. Like honestly, I'm I'm really surprised, and I I really feel if this had come out, I wonder came out, and if it hadn't have been ridiculously expensive, because I think it was like sixty quid or whatever when it when it first came out, it might have stood a chance. And I know that this hasn't done amazingly well either, because Sega have already said that um you know it it has I think they said it didn't like you know reach expectations or whatever, and it's a shame because this is from the team that did Ball and Wonder World as well, which is why I had <laughs> such low expectations of it, and it's great, it's really good, it's um yeah I've really um, enjoyed it. James, what, 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 <laughs> have I guess what the Metacritic score? I was just was. having a look. Just is it like seventy or have... something? Yeah, seventy three. Yeah, I mean, I don't agree with that. It's not too bad. It's, it's a good game. It it really is a good game. I, I'm enjoying what it. What would you give it if you were reviewing it? Uh, I'd probably give it an eight, like out of ten at the moment. Whoa. Yeah. It's. I've, I I've enjoyed it give a it a nine, but he doesn't want to get shouted at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too too scared. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's good. It's mm. it's a it's so much better than I thought it was going to be. And uh, yeah, just uh, it's just nice, you know, because I'm playing it on Switch and it's nice to just like you know just pick it up whenever, do a stage, and just yeah, you know, then move on to the next one. It's it's great. Really really good. You're the biggest mm. Sonic fan without admitting you're a Sonic fan. On the face of the planet, BB, what else have <laughs> you been playing? So the other thing I played over the weekend. I mean, this is really brief because we I started playing Four Swords. Um, with oh. Asha, we managed to get the whole thing to like hooked up and everything. I think we might have to rethink doing a stream. Really, um, does it not work? Well, this is the thing: we were playing it on local multiplayer, mm -hmm. so like, and it was still like dropping connection from time to time. <laughs> There's all like connection problems, ah. and you're just like, this is ridiculous. Like, when this we do it, like... it'll be going through Nintendo servers, which yeah. everyone knows. <laughs> Are amazing. Oh, so are solid. Are they rock? <laughs> it was crazy. Like I was really surprised. I was thinking we're just yeah, we're just like sitting right next to each other using local multiplayer, and this is like still hitching and got problems and stuff like yeah, that. Maybe problem. that's a no go then. What a shame. And, yeah, we. I mean, we only got like as far as the like we finished the tutorial and then didn't get into the main game because I was just like, oh, I've had a bit in, in enough of this now. And uh, but maybe we'll go back to it. I don't know. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think. Technically, there's some problems there. Why is that service so crap? Well, okay, we know it's so crap because they just don't put any money into it whatsoever. Well, but yeah, because like, you know, on the one hand, you could say, oh, well, it's not like the game ever had online functionality to begin with. Like, yeah, but em like emulators sorted this a long time ago. 
Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. been able to do net play with like fucking SNES games. You could do this decades. on Nesticle <laughs> like ages ago, and it was no problem at all. Yeah, yeah. It's like you know that was years ago. Yeah. So yeah, no Shame. excuse. But yeah, that's all right. that's all I played. All right, so this is not going to work then. That's it. It's game over. Oh, the, the dream's dead. No Patreon stream this month, guys. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> we had one idea, idea and it's two idea, so. don't we? <laughs> um, Sean. Hello. Um, so one game I've been playing um, that we'll talk about briefly is The First Descendant. Have you all seen this? Is this the one with like, is that the one I've seen about a million ads for in the last? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's everywhere, isn't it? Yeah. It's a new. What, is it one of those play? ones where you got to make the little army man run and he goes through gates and multiple? It's one you got like you got to get liquid either left side or right side. That one. <laughs> yeah. Or fire the arrow and. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> oh look, there's a square. Connect all the. It's dots. The, I'm thinking the about one, all the, the animals. There's, there, there's three cars and you got to pick which one recently left and then came back because it's got yeah. rain underneath it. Oh yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, I've seen yeah. that one. I've not yeah, seen that good. one. Hmm. It's good because it's one of those that makes you look at it and be like, ah. I figured that out because I'm clever. Maybe I should click on this advert and <laughs> find out what my I like the fact is. that on, on uh, Twitter now it says underneath it, this is not the game what you're seeing. <laughs> yeah, all the community, the game, all the community <laughs> notes are like this is still isn't the game. Uh, the right. First Ascendant is a free-to-play looter shooter. Um, Why are you playing this? Where's this come from? Uh, it's free in it. I was just curious, I suppose. Right. Um, I mean, it, yeah, it took... Like, as you all know, I played a shitload of Destiny, you know, through throughout the last ten years. The final expansion for that is out, and I haven't bothered playing that. So obviously, I was never going to play like an hour of the first Descendant. And be like, oh fuck yeah, this is it. This is it. <laughs> like I just I don't need one of these in my life, right? Um, as a game, it's fine. It's a hell of an advert for Unreal Engine Five, though. Really, it, it just. I mean, it looks great and is like constant 60 frames the entire time. Um, yeah, like visually really impressive. But yeah, and this, as a game, it's fine. I ran around, shot some enemies. There was a, there, there was a story, but was there really? Do you know what I mean? It wasn't, right. wasn't, wasn't particularly gripping. Um, they appear to have just not bothered with lip syncing any of the characters' dialogue, which I thought was amusing. Um it just, yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I I gather like proper reviews are like, yeah, it's, it's okay. It's got some technical problems you need working through or something. But it, it's yeah. done incredibly well. It has, oh, has it done well? Yeah, yeah it had like, well, I've got to do that. Yeah, it's like two hundred thirty thousand concurrent users on Steam. Oh, fair dues. I assume um, that's over the weekend or whatever. But yeah. But it's but it's again, it's everything you were saying, Dave. It's like. Am I going to convince all my mates to play this? Yeah, Probably exactly. Not. I mean, it's free, so obviously there's that that barrier is removed. Um, but also... my mates are fucking brutal as well. If you convince yeah. them to get a game and it's not a pure <laughs> ten, you're on the hit list for about a year. Yeah, yeah. people <laughs> they still reference Onrush to me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Onrush was good. Yeah. Yeah, it's but n- good n- game, not though. good enough. Um, one of them. One of them. Uh, who you know? One of the guys from the, I say guys more of a baby. Chris still talks about he's fuming that um, I made him buy Splatoon three. He's like, "What oh, is so this good. shit? What is this shit?" <laughs> Do you know what game he he convinced me to buy? Mario oh. Strikers. <laughs> so I think, yeah, I think you I'm the win. Am I the winner with that? Right, I'm you win that one. There, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, okay. that was a dreadful game. Sorry. <laughs> it really was, wasn't it? It was awful. Come on. <laughs> You're better um, than that. Yeah, it's first descendant. I've nothing to say about it, really. But, However, that how no, Sean, like you, what, why aren't you playing the first shape? The final shape. The final shape, sorry. <laughs> you're right, um, <laughs> you're just right, no, knowing that I haven't got the time, really. and not. But you've got time to play the first descendant. You could have played, played like two hours fu- of it, and I've got nothing to say about it. Um, no, I, I'm tempted to pick up the final shape literally just to do the campaign and then this final event, which apparently is great and sort of brings a satisfying conclusion to the story. I am tempted. Just there's yeah. loads, loads of cool stuff I'm interested in coming out over the next few weeks. So just, I don't know. Just like like the first Ascendant? Like the first Ascendant. <laughs> the classic. Um, you should check it out. Um, I've also been playing because it was cheap in the Steam summer sale. It was about three quid or something. Jurassic World Evolution 2. 
Um, <laughs> that's how it goes. It's got that in it. That's like the quest complete music. When we you, watched when the you... original with the kids the uh, the other week. Oh, how did they? <laughs> did we give a shit? I no? didn't think it was very good. Okay. <laughs> I was, like they weren't even scared. It's just uh, it's not very good, is it? I was like, <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it I was is. Terrified at the time. The fence um, bit. Yeah, well, the bit where the Velociraptor's in the car, oh, no, no, the, the thing where he like, sprays all the stuff on his eyes in, in the car. Joe said to me, Joe said to me, Oh, yeah, well, not Velociraptor, yeah. That, that, that was quite scary. Me... Oh, you're you one learn of those. nothing watching that film? No. Joe said to me... Um, don't uh, clone dinosaurs, that's what I learned. Yeah, don't go on the toilet if there's a T-Rex about. Yeah, because yep. you're um, eating. Yep. Joe said, oh, should we do the full series? I went, no. No. <laughs> no, yeah, no, we, no. We watched we did the good that. one. And they didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> we did do that, and it got it gets progressively worse. Yeah. And uh, yeah, in the end, uh, Rachel walked out of one of them. She's like, really? "I'm not watching this. It's rubbish." <laughs> Which one was it? I think it was Jurassic well, World's like two or whatever it was. She was well, like, so this is what's this. funny about this game, right? Is that like, one, so I I never played the first one. Um, I've not really played because this is by Frontier, um, who you know they also did. Um, uh, zoo the fuck! Oh my god, I've forgotten the name. The zoo, zoo one. the fuck. Zoo the fuck. Zoo the fuck. Zoo the fuck. And then they did roller coaster the fuck. <laughs> is it zoo keep- uh, no, not zookeeper. <laughs> zoo tycoon. Planet Hospital coaster. Planet coaster. Planet coaster. Planet coaster. Oh yeah. Pla- is it planet zoo? Anyway, they just now so, a sequel for that, aren't they? Oh yeah, they have. Yeah, yeah. So you know they know their stuff when it comes to park management sims, right? Yeah. Um, I gathered the first one of these Jurassic World ones was was sort of. You know, had a bit of a lukewarm reception, and this sort of went around and fixed a lot of the problems with the first game. I don't know; I never played it. Um, but what is funny is one of the selling points of this one is is it's like, oh, it, this one like fits in with the story. It's like set between two of the films, and it's part of the narrative now. And I'm just like, I yeah, haven't seen the films. I don't know. That matters like, yeah. at all. Um, like obviously, I've seen the first film, but not but none of the the world films, right? Um, so, you know, it's got pretend Chris Pratt in it, who's <laughs> awful. Um, but there is a there's a story as you're playing through these missions, right? Which is fine. Um What's what I what is really fun about this is like obviously, you know, we've all played Theme Park or, or Roller Coaster Tycoon or whatever. And so much of those games is like, yeah, it's putting the rides in and stuff, but it's about managing like the experience that the you know the punters have, and it's yeah, the amount of salt in the chips, the amount of salt in your the... chips, the amount of sugar in your drinks, all yeah. that stuff. Um, whereas this is like, like the 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 visitor experience isn't the point. The point is not letting the dinosaurs break out and kill anyone. <laughs> okay, so just upgrade, like, just yeah. upgrade fences. And yeah, like you're, you're good not to go. restaurants. You're not all figure out where the toilets should go, or making sure you've got enough cleaners. You're making sure the dinosaurs aren't. You're making sure the dinosaurs are happy, so they're not breaking out. You're doing. You're getting your your rangers to do like regular welfare checks to make sure your dinosaurs are happy. And if they're not happy, or if they're injured, you're fucking. You're getting in a helicopter and you're flying over and you're fucking tranquilizing them so that you can get a transport here. And like, so you actually can you can have direct control of the vehicles, which is really good fun. Like I was saying, I was talking about Manor of Lords uh, mm. a while back. I was saying I'm, I'm a sucker for like management sims where you can then go down to ground level and like walk around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can do that. But yeah, also you can be like, no, I want to drive the Land Rover actually. Uh, and I want to drive it into the dinosaur pen. And it's terrifying <laughs> because sometimes they don't appreciate you being there and they will just fucking come for you. And then you know what? Like, uh, no need for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you got to drive away from him, and yeah, and and then similarly, yeah, you can control the helicopter, and then you be the the fucking sniper hanging out the side, and you got to shoot him with tranquilizer darts, and it's great fun. And so then, and like, and through the campaign, there'll be there'll be bits where like you, you're setting up a, a base, and they're like, yeah, we know there's like dino- apparently that part of the story is again, I have no idea. Part of the story is that dinosaurs are just loose in the wild now at this point, and like the most of the herbivores were kind of like well maybe just leave them to it as long as they're in like remote areas it's probably fine but then like the carnivores we need to keep an eye on we need to ideally you know get them in a get them in a zoo um so yeah and sometimes it'll just be like oh yeah there's yeah, a protesters dinosaurs. going oh no leave them free uh, weirdly no does not engage with that at all <laughs> 
There's a bit. There's a bit where like there's one character which again, if you've seen the films, you probably know who she is, and it's like, oh, she's working for the government now. We need to be careful around her. Um, I don't know, whatever. Um, but yeah, there'll be scenarios where it's like, oh shit, there's a fucking Allosaurus running around causing havoc and eating deer. Like you need to like track it down and then tranquilize it and then bring it in. Um, so you like, yeah, you, as I say, you sort of following it. Like you're tracking it down in this jeep, and then you transfer into the helicopter, shooting it um, with tranquilizer darts. Um, then, as you're having it transported to your zoo, you're like decking out its like pen where it's going to live, and making sure it's got everything it needs, and like different fucking vegetation types, or making sure it, you know, a little goat dispensing like in the film, yeah. which yeah. Like, or scratching yeah. posts. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sean, sure. are, are tranquilizer darts the only option, or does it have more heavy weaponry? Nukes. Uh, <laughs> In terms of taking them down, yeah, then it's just the tranquilizer darts. And then, like, um, then it's like if they need medicine. James wants to get... blow up a dinosaur. He yeah. just wants to shoot, yeah. Wants to fire a tactical nuke. Watches. Just call me Turok. <laughs> <laughs> I won't call you Turok. It's all right. Okay. It's all right. Guys. <laughs> it, it, James, it's, but as long as I've known you, you've tried to get me to call you Turok. Like, <laughs> it, it, when you pick your own no- like nickname, it doesn't work. Yeah, how many times <laughs> are we going to tell you? Pisses me off so much. He puts it in his signature in his emails and it makes me cringe. Yeah. Please call me Turok. My nickname's Turok. Well, do you remember? Calls me it. At the Independent Podcast Awards, he out took he took my phone and actually changed his name in my phone. It's like <laughs> James Turok Farley. So like we get it, but come on. No one Can calls you that, James. Sick of it. I know, but one day they will. Maybe. <laughs> no, they won't. <laughs> yeah, it, it might stick. To you. No one wants to call you Turok. I'm afraid. Sorry, what was this game good then? Was it? It was. I mean, <laughs> yeah, really enjoyed it. it says uh, here it's actually vo- one of the characters actually vo- yeah, Doctor Ian Malcolm's actually voiced by Jeff Goldblum and yes, Claire Deeming actually yeah. by Bryce Dallas Howard. Oh really? So it was just Chris Pratt they couldn't? Yeah, because I thought like most of the voice acting seemed fine apart from Chris Pratt. It would sound like Mario. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it runs really nicely on the Steam Deck. You can play most of it on the Steam Deck and also fine with like controller controls as well. Go on, Can... what? No, Have that you... joke was shit, Matt. That was oh, a right. shit <laughs> joke. <laughs> oh. Sounds like Mario. Fucking think I, they don't all... go for the obvious one all the time. Just add a little bit of spice to it. Well, I could, I could, I could have said it sounds like Garfield, but I didn't want to. It was a bit That's wanky, true. isn't it? No, no, you, did. you made the right choice. Actually, I, I thought this game. Looking at it, and mm. um, uh, to be fair, the first image that comes up when you Google it, it's a PlayStation Four title. <laughs> I thought this. I assume this come out ages ago, but it's not. It was twenty twenty one. It was twenty one. It came out. Oh yeah, okay. November the ninth, twenty twenty one. The foot. The, the evolution well, what, two or evolution number two. One. Jurassic okay. World Evolution two, released okay. November the ninth, twenty twenty one. Damn. According to Wikipedia. Well, um, famous liar. That's usually right, isn't it? Uh, oh, also, Isaac played it for a bit and he realised that if you drive the Jeep around the park when you've got guests in, they all dive out the way of the Jeep and scream and he thought it was the funniest thing he's ever seen. And he's uh, right. Did you then say to him, uh, yeah, your dad once did that in a fishing game for a live stream <laughs> for these Patreon subscribers? No, I didn't. Because we did. We yeah, were we did. supposed to be good. fishing, but we raced Jeeps across the terrain good, and tried it? to drive it into each other. <laughs> Uh, because fishing, it turns out, is boring, uh, Matt. Uh, you've been playing a game that I'm very interested in. I'm so interested in this game. I said, I, s- <laughs> I sent a voice note to Sean. You did. Um, and he, can I play it? Your, it's not going to come across on the mic, is it? Oh, the fucking <laughs> the voice note. I need to find it. Um, so explain what this game is, and let me let me uh, find the voice note. One sec. Yeah, so I've been playing Case of the Golden Idol, which is on Game Pass, or is, is on Game Pass. I'm not sure if it, I think it might have arrived in the last week or two. And it's a, another murder mystery uh, game, uh, which some people likened, uh, strangely, to um, Ob- Ob- Oberdin, which obviously we mentioned last week uh, or the week before. And yeah, um, I'm only, so I think I'm only up to ch- chapter five, so I've probably only put like two, two or so hours into it. But um it's really, really interesting. So it all basically surrounds this family uh, court. I can't remember what they're called, but it doesn't matter. Um, and you play in these various kind of scenes. Uh, the first like, chapter, the first kind of like prologue or the first area you play is one scene and you'll see like a slightly animating scene. And in that one scene, you'll see there's a question marks and you'll click a question mark 
and uh, that could sh bring up some information about the the thing you've clicked on like you could click on a character and it might show something that's in their pocket or it, you could click on like an item you know in, in a room and it will show a book and this and that and as you're doing this uh these the information you see or collect will contain names of places or people or you know uh, nouns verbs and what you're doing is you're collecting all these and essentially you've got to like uh, fill up these empty spaces where it'll say blank blank did blank blank and then he killed blank blank and then so as you're collecting all these uh, clues you're trying to work out who the people are in the scenes you're trying to work out like motives uh, the first scene for instance like, before the game really properly starts is uh, it's just one screen and it is uh, one person pushing another person um, off a cliff and the thing you've got to fix is the thing you've got to find is name name so first name surname pushed first name surname off cliff at beep beep um and yeah it's, it's your it's your kind of quest to work out who the two people are in this first scene there's like two backpacks and one of them's got like some tobacco in it and then as you click on one of the people falling off the cliff one of them's got a pipe so okay well that person must be must be that backpack mm. uh, the other one's got a letter uh, it says like dear tim or whatever it is um and it's like okay so you click on tim that's been added to the list and uh, yeah it's, it's it's really really interesting because you're kind of work, we're learning about this 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 golden idol. I mean, the story is quite mysterious and doesn't really explain anything. So I know something clearly weird has happened with this golden idol, when you know there's been there's been murders involved in it. But I'm not quite sure what what the idol's doing or why people are you know dying in its cause. But th just that first scene was one screen, super super simple. Now I'm on chapter on the fifth chapter, I think, and it's you'll go and see your five five different rooms, five different chap five different screens. All either when a murder's happened or a murder has just happened, and as well as solving the main thing where you fill up this like, big old big old sentence structure, and they're much more complicated now. Um, it'll be like you know this person did that and did this because of this reason using this at that time. Um, now yeah, there's like four or five screens, and there's all optional things like there's those are people's pictures, and you got to like, find all the names, you got to work out who is who. Um, or there's other kind of optional things where there's one place you go and there's loads of people's initials and it's um, them playing cards. And there's like AG and BB and, and BM. It's like, okay, well, A, I think I've only found one name that begins with A, so that has to be that person. So I'll put that in there. But there's like two Bs, which one is it? And you'll find other clues in and around the game that says, well, actually, like that B wasn't even there at that time, so it can't, it has, must be the other person. And it's really, really interesting. I mean, the first four chapters, I just played uh, just by playing the game, watching it, working out the clues. But now on the fifth one, I've actually had to start writing notes on my phone <laughs> because it's got really, really complicated. So one of the other optional ones is like you, I had to like list um, how long people had worked at a certain place uh, for, for another optional puzzle because I had to like, there's like a map of where they lived in this this house. So yeah, I wasn't just like able to sort of remember it. I was like, okay, well that person worked for this length of time, that person, there's a letter saying, welcome to your first day at work, or whatever it was, and that was dated a certain date. It's really, really good. Like it's quite funny as well. Like even though these, these are murders, the, the writing is is quite nice and sharp and pithy. It's very crude. The artwork's quite crude, isn't it? It's not, it doesn't look like it gets too gory. Uh, no, no, no. It, it, I mean, it, it, crude, crude, it feels, um, yeah, crude feels harsh. Uh, um yeah i mean it's, yeah, it's simplistic it, 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 it's, on, Dave. i mean if you take <laughs> it that way thing. but i think it's intentionally crude i'm not saying yeah it, I, it's I mean, bad i'm just yeah it's definitely like a bad if I'm did, definitely like an, an old school look but I, I think it's quite charming actually because there, there are little animations as you like click on things and yeah it's, it's like it's a nice little nice little look what's this uh audio what's this voice then well, okay, right. So, because right, I, I, I had a question for Sean as well, but uh, I'll okay, do it after right. well, we, we, this. this the, firstly, it gives us an insight into how boring we are. <laughs> um, uh, Joe once said early on in our relationship that she did manage to come across my phone and check in on some messages uh, to see. You know, just to check that I wasn't being a naughty boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, "I said, what did you find?" She said, "I found out I was the most one of the most boring people on the face of the planet." <laughs> the shit you talk about with your friends is so dull. <laughs> um, so I don't know if I can play my side of the conversation. Hold on. I don't think you need to. Do you? In other news, was it you this that is said fun. the Golden Idol was good? Hmm. Um, it's on Game Pass. Was it you that said that you played it at one point? I'm watching the trailer. It looks fucking weird. Right, okay, right, so let's have it. Now, this is Sean's reply, and just notice how wildly out of control 
this voice note gets because <laughs> I was listening to it crying with laughter <laughs> and then he followed it up straight away with another voice note ready uh, so I've not played it but I've been meaning to um, it's I think Joe Scrabbles really loves it I mean it's 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 well loved uh, across the board I think um, I, I'm doubly well so it's on Game Pass it's also on Netflix if you've got Netflix you can get it on your phone or your tablet or whatever if that's preferable um but yeah, it's better to be well good. And also, like, doubly. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> listen, listen. Yeah, you can probably get on better with. Uh, <laughs> like, the similar sort of thing. In that you piece the stuff together, but it's a bit more linear. Right, and then he follows it up with this one straight away. <laughs> Fuck's sake. I'll send you another message in a second. <laughs> 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 like, I was like, am I on his speakerphone on his phone and he's wound the window down? <laughs> Is that what's happened? There? Just engulfed by like a tornado or fire or something. Do you want what me to explain? Happen? Is it less funny if yeah. I do? Uh, no, yeah, it probably is less funny if you do. Yeah, I thought I'll leave it. I was fucking crying listening to that how it was just slowly building up i thought this is like every piece of audio james farley's ever sent us um <laughs> mate this looks really good was you playing on xbox yeah I'm playing on xbox yeah yeah is, is how's that... it control is it is it crosshair well, when you're moving the crosshair yeah so i think that's a bit for like i i i've actually looked at it on pc like the ui is actually quite different so as you collect yeah. all these like words uh, nouns, verbs, and whatnot, uh, and uh, plain names of people, they go off into this like, little book icon and it tells you how many you found. It might say, like, there's up to 36 to find, and it might say you found one, two, three, etc. And you'll click on the book to see all the ones you found. Um, but on the PC one, I've seen that they're all at the bottom all the time. You can see them. Whereas this, you go and go, go, go to other places, and it's quite, you can like press use the D pad to like quickly move your cursor from item to item. Uh, but the, if um, when you first enter a scene, or even when you want to go back to looking at some of the clues you found, there's like question marks and then, uh, or there's maybe exclamation marks. And when you click them once, they turn to exclamation marks. But like, it, when you keep pressing right, 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 it's like goes up and down, left, right. And then you can use the mm. analog stick to go to where you want. But it's not always as responsive to like click on it. So I think it's been much better with a mouse or maybe touch on, on iPad, I, I think, as you say, mentioned. Yeah, might, I reckon it'd be great. Yeah. I reckon I reckon it'd be brilliant on iPad, actually. Um, but no, so my question to you, Sean, was I wondered if you had played this, and I didn't ask you, but I was like, oh, I'll search on YouTube, but I couldn't find it, but I guess one you had talked no, about no, it. No, I played this, always meant to, um, hmm. but now that I've got two ways of playing it for free, in inverted commas. Yeah, um, and they announced a no sequel, piece. or another one yes. um, on, what was it, more recently? For, mm -hmm. where, where, where did they announce it? Like Summer Game Fest, or... Uh, possibly, can't remember. During, yeah, there's a new one. Yeah. New one on the yeah. But no, uh, it, it's also got so uh, one of them I had got. So there's often up to like three of these optional things where it's like, you know, it, it, uh, there's loads of pictures of everyone. And if you can get it, that's an optional, but it's going to help you with the main kind of puzzle. There's another one, it might be like, you know, there's just different ones per, per like, level. And I got all them, and I still couldn't quite work out like who who killed someone or how they killed someone because there's often things like oh, this 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 door is locked and there's a window here but the glass was here and I was like okay I can't quite get it so there is a hint system and the hint system works quite similarly to this new the new monkey uh, island game where it doesn't quite give you the answer straight away but it like gives you nice hints when so this one is a bit different so it really says like we recommend do not do not use these hints at all because you know the whole game is about mm -hmm. working out how the murders take place and and whatnot and the motives so do not do it but i was like i want to i couldn't quite get it so and i didn't want to google it but on this one on the one idea at least there's like four subjects one's like the motive and it'll say look like just because someone could have access to you know the the, the person would they really have wanted to do it so it wasn't actually saying do this or do that it was actually just getting me to think differently about why they would possibly want to kill this person and there's like the motive there's like the weapon and i'm not sure if those are different i assume they're different maybe for every every chapter you're asking for hints for but it's really really, really good actually so and after them i was like oh yeah man, i guess i guess i could think differently about one thing and, and i got it but so I haven't had a google it a google an answer because the hint system was really really nicely done um yeah i think apart from the, the control as i said it's a bit finickety but really like the writing um yeah i'm only about five chapters in don't know how big it is but it's just really charming i think and uh yeah funny 
the the story is about like this this one family and it, that's progressing and getting like wilder and wilder and it's getting much more complex now as i mentioned now i've actually having to take notes to get the solutions done and you feel really cool really clever when you get one uh, done so uh yeah i'm loving it so far so this cool. is like more on the sort of the, the Professor Layton side of things in terms of it being more puzzle heavy rather than narrative heavy. Is that right? Yeah, I didn't play any Layton games, but um, I've seen some people like compare that to this. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely, well, I mean, it is a puzzle to, to work it out. And yeah, there is a narrative that kind of backs it up, but it's all really about working out who did what. And, and, if, and when you start a new a new chapter it's really overwhelming at first because it might have four screens and all of them might have like you know as many as you know 10 or so kind of uh, points on the screen to click so at first i'm just like clicking on everything and amassing all the verbs all the names all the places i can get and then i go back and say okay what's the thing i've actually got to solve um and actually the thing i've got to solve i often do at last i get like the optional ones done and those build up a really really great picture of who's done what and where they are. And then after that, I do the final thing of filling in the blanks and, and whatnot to actually solve the main part of the chapter. But yeah, but really, really good. Like, yeah, but they're not like Leighton and it'd be like, oh, you've talked to a character. Now here's three matchsticks and you've got to rearrange them. to make, or, yeah. You know, there's not like sort of weird puzzles like that. Is yeah, it's it? not it's like contrived puzzles, puzzles like that. Puzzles yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I love no. that shit. Yeah, I mean, I mean one of the ones I've done... There's a goat and a dog. <laughs> man one side of the river <laughs> what do you yeah. think luke <laughs> but no, no, i mean it, it's, yeah, it's just really good how we, like you have to go like one of the ones i'm on now there's like a dinner table laid out and you need to work out like where everyone's sat on the dinner table and like one of the t uh, one of the uh uh, you know, places where someone sat, the fork's missing, and then like, oh, you see someone later with a fork. Like, okay, well, clearly they sit there, and you find letters saying, oh, I really need to sit next to that person, uh, and also, but and then another letter somewhere saying, well, that person doesn't eat meat. So you're like trying to work out who's done what, and then two people are the same, like, well, hang, but that that can't be the case, and you find another clue, and yeah, the other one I'm trying to work out of like the people who have worked this place the longest using letters, and and you, there's ornaments saying, oh, yeah, like congrats on your three year anniversary, Mrs. Whatever it is. Um, and so you're using all the bits of the environment, plus letters, plus other bits to work out. And it's, yeah, it's really nicely done. And I'm excited to play more. Cool. Cool. All right. And that's what we've been playing this week. Should we get to a couple of questions before we mm. head off for another week? If you want to send us a question, go to tcgs.co forward slash dear tcgs. Maria Mendieta says, dear tcgs cauldrons, led by the hype, I played Angerfoot this weekend and was fascinated with its art. It joins the likes of Pizza Tower and Nidhogg 2 as examples of games with wonderfully disgusting aesthetics and style of the TMNT Mutant Mayhem movie. What is the line that makes grotesque or ugly-looking art design in games palatable rather than completely off-putting? Keep up the stellar work, sincerely, Maria. I mean, I'd argue in the case of Nidhogg 2 that it was off-putting. Um, really? That didn't, was horrible. Didn't... Uh, yeah, I, I like I like them. It sold like a fraction of what the, the first game did. Oh, what was the... Oh, Nidhogg 2. Yeah, yeah, what did Nidhogg 2... I remember they changed it quite a bit, didn't they? Yeah, it looked like an Amiga game, but in a bad a way. Bad <laughs> way. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Um, Pizza Tower, I, I get it, but it, the aesthetic of that does give me anxiety. Um, I don't know. What's the line that makes I mean, uh, yeah, I suppose, like, this is relevant to, like, so Kanitsugami, which comes out this week, like, playing the demo of that. Like all the monsters in that fucking horrible, but I can't stop looking at him. <laughs> He's just like, God, that's horrible. But isn't it imaginative <laughs> in how horrible it is? It's weird. You have a nice idea. I think it's the same with um, uh, Disco Elysium, right? There's a lot of that artwork mm. looks disgusting. Yeah. Yet for some reason, it works within the world it's created. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you sort of let it go. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think some games just look ugly or disgusting for ugly sake whereas others feed into like the atmosphere and the story it's trying to tell um and so it really works so i think if it's i mean if it's just ugly and that you know obviously your art is subjective and you're not a fan of art then that is fine but sometimes even art i may not be a fan of if it leads into or links into a story or just creates more of an atmosphere i'm more than happy to go along with it james you're james, on mute, you're on mute. <laughs> Yeah, it's the first time I've done that for ages. Um, no, I, oh, I remember that's okay that... then. It's because yeah, you haven't been on the show for ages. Yeah, and last week yeah. we couldn't hear because of piano. No, I noticed, so it's fine. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> piano, man. No, I was just remembering, like, de there's a uh, sort of a there's a series called Death Mark. Uh, there's been, like, I think we're on the second or third one by now. And they're kind of, they're like horror, like, games. Yeah, they're oh. like visual novel horror games. And it's like, 
they kind of go in that direction because some of the stuff in that they look really gross like the stuff like the designs they have but you can't help but look at them because they just look interesting as well <laughs> which is just yeah it's just gross horrible but yeah mm. i was trying to remember that other game as well that i complained about that we were watching once it was one of those games that everyone was like that everyone loved and i, I remember saying it, it looked like somebody had been sick on the screen and it was like <laughs> it was one of those ones that was like um a clicker or something like that that mm. everyone was going and saying it was brilliant and then no one ever talks about it i forgot Call of duty might have been yeah that was it yeah it was a uh, black ops yeah that's all. was it mafia wars no, I don't think so. No. Was it one where you sell weed? <laughs> what was that one? No, it wasn't that one. No, I was just remembering it was, remember it was spin, I was thinking about spin.io the other day. I got really addicted to spin.io. Well, that that that, it was a fidget spinner and you controlled the fidget spinner around the screen and the more f you could knock out other fidget spinners or collect little balls and you got bigger and bigger and bigger. And basically, if you had a more powerful fidget spinner to anyone else you could oh it was so good but it also <laughs> used to fry your processor in the same time so some weird reason it was Probably a mining game. for crypto in the background or something like yeah it almost definitely <clears throat> spin.io what a game that was all right uh, i mean i think all the all the, the cop-out answer is also obviously modern games could be using like an ugly art style as like an intentional throwback right or a reference oh, or something hell to... yeah yeah, it's like you know, whether it's '90s sort of cartoons or video games, they're both relatively ropey looking at the time. Someone Did you, have you played any Angerfoot yet, Sean? I haven't. No, um, I feel like it's too similar to Mullet Mad Jack, which I still need to finish. So I feel like I should, I should finish that first, and then I'll yeah. look at Angerfoot. Mullet yeah. Mad Jack is that a real game? Yeah, I talked about it. You talked about it on a pod, James. James, when you. Well, no. certainly wasn't here. well, you should have listened to the there. show, shouldn't you? Well, you yeah. said listen to it, James. Did you? <laughs> did, you did you not listen to the show? He oh, I definitely did. It's just, uh, I mean, it's such an amazing title that, uh, yeah, it slipped my mind. Yeah. Again, I cannot believe you're in this position. <laughs> um, next, next message, next question. Next and final question mm. comes from Jason Beaver. <laughs> <laughs> Jason. Says, what's up, y'all? A few pods ago, Dave said he didn't think it would be a problem for Don't Nod to release their spiritual successor to Life is Strange, Lost Records, colon, Bloom and Rage, at the same time as Life is Strange, colon, Double Exposure. I, however, feel it makes perfect sense for them to feel the need they need to delay for these reasons. The IP brand of Life is Strange is way stronger than starting again from, uh, from scratch. Then, to make matters worse for Don't Nod, they were going to be competing with the fact that the main character in probably the most loved Life is Strange game, Max Caulfield, is returning to the series. I think that name recognition, uh, name recognition would have overshadowed Don't Nod's game 100%. I doubt your casual fan even realises that Life is Strange has switched hands and will just say, wow, Max is back, when there's zero brand slash name recognition besides the text in the trailer from the creators of Life is Strange 1 and 2. Just wanted to see if you still feel that they could have released the same in the same time period as each other, even with all that said. Appreciate you all. Jason Beaver, FKA Daniel Diaz. <laughs> yeah, what's up, Daniel? Um, uh, <laughs> I am... Um, uh, it's the Diaz brothers. Uh, yeah. I... Uh, my point was that I I don't think cas I don't think <laughs> and I'm wrong. Look, all right, I'm wrong. But it doesn't feel like there's casual life is strange players. <laughs> yeah, you're either in or it's out, like, right? It's you're either a... <laughs> really in or you by at this point you've really got to like Life is Strange to give a shit about a new Life is Strange game. And if you really give a shit about them, you know that that uh don't nod uh uh making their own game that mm. looks exactly like life is strange and you're probably going to buy both that's it's the true. way i, I mean rachel it. knows all that and because she's really into the series like massively into it but she knows that i mean mm. but that's because i told her and she told me she doesn't care <laughs> <laughs> um right. i think mr beaver has got a point but i think yeah, yeah like the fact that these these are games that you can hammer in basically a weekend and then you're ready to play something else yeah probably helps quite a lot they're not Fortnite, are they it's not like oh well you're going to be on that for the next two months yeah i, I mean I, I would still get out of the way just yeah, but, uh, yeah. why not yeah, sega yeah, yeah. thought the same as that with sonic superstars and look how wrong they were <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i'd argue that you if you're like definitely if you're if you're into these games you're buying both of these and you're playing yeah. both of these I, I, I don't think it's one or two of a 
I don't also think in terms of like other... in terms of like kind of paid social ads, like you know, the the people mm. probably buying all the search terms if they know what they're doing. So it's just yeah, it's just not worth it. I, I would absolutely move out of the way and come back. Yeah, whenever I, mean, I do ready, think there is a, a genuine risk of time. people seeing trailers for Lost Records and being like, oh, it's just a Life is Strange rip off. Yeah, it's just, yeah <laughs> so, not worth yeah. it. Not worth it. Does that get out of the way, baby? Yep. And that's about Murray saying it. Yeah, and no, I know my shit. At last. Finally. Here we go. Uh, that's, that's it. it. That's it. Jinx. That's it. That's it. That's it. Should we get to socials, Matt? That yes. is it. We uh, we stream on Twitch. Uh, Twitch.tv slash TCGS. If you want to watch when we stream, just follow us there and you'll, you'll, you'll be notified when we go live. Uh, if you miss the streams live, we are also on YouTube. Search for TCGS on YouTube and you'll see the VODs of past streams, uh, such as... Oh no! Did, did I put your one of you on the bike? You on? did. Thank you. Sorry, I meant to say yeah. thank you. Yeah, I did my my Grand Theft Auto Four stream with the all oh, that's the one, yeah. And yeah. You know, miles an hour mod Sean with fast funny. cars is all up on there. Yeah, just search TCGS on YouTube. Uh, if you've got Amazon Prime now and a Twitch account, connect to them, and with that, you get Twitch Prime Gaming, and they give you one sub a month to give to any channel of your choice. Why not go to our channel and give it to us? Because we really, really appreciate it, despite what we said at the start of the show. Um, and the Patreon is patreon.com slash TCGS to support what we're doing over here, uh, to give James a wage, even though he barely turns up. Uh, and you can also get a monthly exclusive podcast for that, uh, our talk servers or video streams each month, because we still need to decide what we're doing this month. They're on patreon.com slash TCGS. And the website is tcgs.co for links to uh, our store for the time being and our socials, podcasts. I thought and our bits like down. That. Is that store yeah, we don't down? Have a store. And we've still got one. No, right? we have it a store. Doesn't... It's just the James Farley team. Yeah, it just doesn't have oh, the, right. the merch that everyone wants. Okay. <laughs> no, all right. It's For now. coming. We will catch you next week. Thank you so much for living it. Remember, sign up. Otherwise, we'll stop. <laughs> TCGS thing. Goodbye, everybody, <laughs> baby. Night-night. Bye. Bye-bye.